this button works. Perhaps it does. Hey, look at that. It does. Hey, look at that. What do you know? Uh, good to see you. Welcome. Hi. Happy Wednesday. Uh, sound is okay. Oh, I'm, I'm very, I'm loud. It's nice. It's actually good. And then, um, let me check real quick to see if I can hear some awful. Now, Florida Governor Ron. Yeah, that's pretty awful. Uh, awful. There you go. Hey, what's happening? All right. Perhaps I should one to the two sites because it features on Google. Because I mentioned where to click data sites and start a device. Goes go away. Um, go away. Um, couple of funny things right out of the gate. Uh, besides it being Hump Day, and that's kind of cute. Um, it, the uh. Morning show uh, audio stuff should, I think the glitches I've worked out maybe how I could minimize them. I don't know that I can solve them because foreign countries, but I think I've found a way to minimize them. And that means using this software instead of the other just to give uh, Phil and Johnny another option. The hard part is getting Chicago in. That'll be fun. So wish me luck. Um, fingers crossed. We shall see what we shall see and who can say uh, at all. So. Um, that said, uh, let's see, There's, is this guy back there with this show in background? This is the, is that, no, I guess it just stays and all right. Um, so hi, hello, good to see you. Hello chat room. Now let's see if the, does the chat work right now or is it in the wrong place? Hold on. There's me and there's, is the, does the chat start? Oh, there it is. It starts coming in. Look at that. Hey, that's exciting. I don't know why I'm in a box, but that's fine. I'm okay. I can live with that. I can survive that. That's reasonable. Um, and I can see the chat and the other thing, although this is moving pretty pretty darn fast. Uh, like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. Um, become a Patreon. Help us uh, build a better travel rig so that I don't have to trade off uh, every bit of... Every, every gain I've made in production quality at home uh, when I go out on the road, which, because of Sexy Liberal and other things, is going to be uh, increasing in the next year. So there you go. All the more reason. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, share the show, blah 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 hate doing that stuff, but whatever. What are you going to do? Uh, it's Houseworks Mega Worldwide, and you know that. Um, let's see. Is there a... Do I get to put this in? What happens if I turn this on? Is that... Oh, look at that. There's the little QR code thing. And then I know I have a title in here somewhere. God damn it. Um, but I guess it's not on there. All right. Such a strange thing. Let's add the text thing and go, uh, let's see. Uh, space. Um, whoops. I'm putting it in there. I'm typing in the wrong area. One second. That was my bad. Um, um, there we go. Oh, I already got that. Uh, let's see put this up here and shrink this down and oh that won't work that's not good shrink it way down to that and then uh how about uh, we do i guess we'd have to duplicate it or something right just to get a mega worldwide and no 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 time like the present you can can you tell that i had to like rebuild something straight from scratch it's always fun when that happens um there we go and then we uh, shrink this guy down and then we drag it up here. And then look, we got a show title. Isn't that nice? I do this all by myself. And it's, you know, it's it, it's frugality like this, if I do say so my damn self, uh, that allows me, your humble servant, um, to uh, to not get into the trouble, <laughs> it would seem, uh, that uh, our dear friends over at The Blaze apparently have gotten into. Um, in case you don't know, the, the Blaze is being sued for $10 million because they... They did a like a cruise for freedom thing, uh, and they did it in uh, what was that year when Trump was still president and the world was we were in hell and tubes of hell. Not now, uh, COVID. That's right, 2020. And it was supposed to happen in uh, 2020, but they uh, it never did, and they just kept the money. So Bill O'Reilly and the Blaze are being sued for 10 million dollars. <clears throat> Man, remember the old days when Bill O'Reilly had to. Uh, violently sexual assault a woman, allegedly, for uh, half a decade to have to pay somebody out that amount of money. Of course, if it dragged on for 15 years, he might even be made to pay uh, 30 plus million dollars, as if that would ever happen. Um, that said, um, it's just kind of a nice thing. Um, so perhaps, just perhaps, we can, it, it, we can all look forward to the day when Glenn Beck has audio problems like I have in choppy video and is trying to use uh, shit Wi-Fi to try and get the show out uh, against a, you know, a throw-together background. I'm just saying, you know, a boy can dream, can he? 
I will say that um, if he really gets in trouble, I am not against either uh, doing a big GoFundMe with you guys or starting up, you know, get, taking out a business loan and buying that studio off of him and changing all the G's and B's to H's and S's. I just think it could be a plan. Um, now, uh, lots of stuff to cover today. Um, <laughs> not, not the least of which is the sad, sad, super sad, totally sad state of affairs in uh, Republican uh, <clears throat> politics. This, I, I would like to take a moment, if I may, um, with my, um, sorry, my, my locks are looking very luscious today. I'm just saying. I, I think it's w watching all the Tommy Thayer videos lately. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and it's, and a, a little bit of, I found a little bit of head banging actually, you know, gives my, my hair the, the proper kind of lie down body that I, I like in it and stuff. And the green screen kind of flattens it out. You don't re really the full body. I'll deal with it later. Anyways, compared to me though, um, which, you know, few can, um, on your, uh, your far left, ironically enough, is, uh, I believe that's Marie Le Pen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm, I'm kidding. Marie Le Pen, for those of you who don't know, is Laura Ingram's stunt double. And um, La Laura Ingraham, who, by the way, is wearing um, a very special cross, a specific type of cross, where the kind of cross where, I don't know, people who are quite blonde and blue-eyed at one point made modifications of it and wore them in very untoward ways. And did, you know, it doesn't have the, the kind of messianic cross, which is the shape of the, the whole person that was crucified. It's just the, ah, you know what? I'm being judgmental. I'm assuming far too much about uh, Laura Ingraham just because there may or may not be pictures of her, uh, Zeke Heiling. But um, you know what? Maybe she's just a huge donor to the Red Cross, and they sent her that as a special gift, along with her chain earrings, which are very classy, and really go with that uh, 80s real estate agent blouse uh, jacket combo that she's wearing. Now, um, in case this guy forgets who he is, he's got his name written on his on his jacket, like he, like he's the president. Or the, I think it might be even, no, it's just the fur president. Yeah, it's not even his governor jacket. Um, I, I got to say, I think he's been taking smiling lessons from uh, from Devin Nunes. Or perhaps, even though it looks like they're in separate rooms, she farted on him. Because uh, honestly, does he always look like someone just farted right under his face? Or maybe it's his own and he just, it's like, what nastiness came out of me? He's got that kind of a look on his face. Um, six weeks from Iowa, which sounds like a, uh, a, a horror cross-country buddy movie. So uh, we'll get to them in just a minute. On top of that, uh, Greg Kelly uh, has on, uh, well, I don't know if he has him on. He has footage of, uh, of, of this fella. And then um, we got a little bit more of Tucker and uh, Roseanne together. Now, Trump... After he gave his blathering speech, I don't even call it a speech because he didn't have, he, remember he didn't have notes except the notes he was reading from. And um, he didn't really have any policies, just a lot of gripes, which is not surprising. I mean, I, I, like, it's all the same. But anyways, uh, he went to a street pub and eatery where like, oh, food, oh. And so this is the B-roll that Forbes put out of him uh, gathering. Were you, you over in the room before? No, we've been here with you. We had a great time to show you. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? How are you? I did it okay. Yeah. I'm a little tough, How's, how is sports team doing? They're doing okay, are they? Yeah, yeah, you got a good, you got a team. I noticed you have a sports team on your Sweater thing there. That's good. I just wanted to pray for you to seek forgiveness from God for all your sinful, disgusting, pussy grabbing behavior. So thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the God blesses. Uh, if I actually gave a shit, I, I'm sure those would make me feel a lot better. Who are you with and why are you touching? Are you with anybody here? Are you with anybody here or are you just, what are you doing later? My son and my husband. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. That's really nice. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. It was very nice to meet you. Really appreciate what you said. Uh, who are you with? Good. So I can shake hands with them and move on so that uh, you can't tag yourself to someone who's like further down the line and then uh, give me an you know an awkward moment. Are you disappointed you're not going to be debating on Wednesday? Was the question. Not a lot of people. Yeah. Trump. They're about Trump. 70 points down. So I don't think too many people. Are you concerned about testifying on Monday with the guys? Oh, no, no, no. Yes, come on, let's go. Yeah. Thank you for saving America. Thank you for saving America. <laughs> what do you mean? For Joe Biden to destroy? Thank you for saving America from itself. I, I would follow you anywhere. My husband and I, we, we take turns. Uh, we bought some, some of your farts online in a bag. We don't know if they're real, but we smell them anyways. Bye. Would you sign my hat? Oh, I love it. Hey, you are the most resilient man. In my you are the most resilient man ever. You know what? Why don't you just invite him to sit at your table and, uh, and, but he's, you got to stay for the whole meal. You can't, you never tap out. Yeah, he's in a pub in Davenport, Iowa. Named after my character in Lab Rats, by the way, and I'm, uh, a little upset. There's one guy saying four more years and trying to get a chant going. Good, it's good quality video. It's good. It's, a, it's all usable B-roll. I think it's be great. Good job, Forbes. Everybody there. Kicking names and taking ass over there at Forbes these days. I got, I got footage of him sort of saving America in Iowa. That's a good shot. It's great. In case you were wondering what the cameraman's shoes look like. Yeah, let's go. All right. Cuidado, you must stop. I'm doing well. Come on in here. He's, we're we're local pastor. I know that. I know. Hey, I'm uh just so you know, I'm local businessman and uh, landowner. I would ba basically if this was a season of Reacher, I'd be the villain. Nice to meet you. Oh, you're the one. Yeah, that's our man. So tell me, can he win? Yes, yeah. we are going to make it. He's going to make it. Can he win? Okay, well, then I'll endorse you. These people said so. Eight out of 37 people said this at a pub. So you're gonna num I'm going to endorse you, and your numbers are going to go up like a rocket ship. And then two years from now, you're going to turn on me like they all do. <laughs> do you know that? Should I do it? He means, should I, uh, uh, should I endorse him? Well, listen to the person yell no. No! He's really choppy. I'm sorry. So maybe it's only Twitch again. Oh, you can't understand me or them or what? Huh? How's the feed, guys? Sorry. It should, it, I'm the, hmm. It looks smooth on my end. That doesn't really tell me much, does it? Mm. If he had the endorsement, I think we, we need, need to endorse him. Hey, so so why are you running away? I, I would help you save this guy. She's just like, oh, she's a problem. She can't even vote to impeach Mallorca. Oh, did she not? Did she oh, no. What did you even vote for? You know, I have your thing down. I have your thing back there. Are you the only one running against right. her? You're running in the Republican primary. Right. Right. You could beat her. 
With your help. He will. With my help? Yeah. Uh, batting about 99%. But I want to help you. Yes. you Take a picture. Take a good picture. Is this your guy up here? Yeah, okay. You have just seen the entire decision-making process that Trump goes through to pick a, a, a person to endorse. That's it. Oh, is it, it it's is it just the hmm I'm gonna check um to, uh, hold on one second output video um just checking to see if um bandwidth statistics that's what I need sorry move this over here um okay it's 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 pretty up and down, but it's averaging fairly well, sort of. Right. Okay, we're in the three zone. It's not great, but it's not gonna kill us. Okay, so yeah, that was the whole process, ladies and gentlemen. He's he's getting a picture with this guy that he's basically gonna endorse for in the primary. That's it. Here, come on. Thank you, President. Which is your camera? This one? Or no, mine's right, right there. Okay, right let's go. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Let me have one with him alone now, okay? I'll do it. Oh, you got I'll text. Let me have one with this guy who I'm going to endorse because he's the only one running, so the chances of winning are pretty good. Maybe we'll use this if it's good. Hold on. Oh, Lift hold on. it up higher. Let me get to the photo. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> got it. Okay, let's, let me see what that looks like. Oh, he's got, he's got photo... Uh, He's got to have photo acceptance on these. Yeah. That's a nice picture. Are you sure he's good? Yes. He's good. Yeah. He loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. And you're a pastor. He loves the Lord. Okay, so he's going to be brought up soon on sexual assault charges. Is that what we're... He is. He's literally making the decision to support this rando fucker at a... At a pub, the dude just managed to muscle his way up next to him, say some bullshit, and now that's it. That's the whole thing. That's it. That's not one of our best. That's why you're doing it. Well, and how about uh, the Democrat? A little tough for Democrats. It's just sort of a even kind of weak professor from the University of Iowa. Yeah, the Democrats going to win the area anyways. Beat her in the primary. I have your card, you know. Yeah. We're praying for you. <laughs> this is a big event here, you know. This guy. Yeah. That's risky for me to do. You know that, right? President Trump, will you be watching the debate tomorrow? No, I won't. I'll be doing something. Else. Are you gonna be dating? No, I'm not debating. I'm doing something else. I, I, we'd love to stay and talk, but I gotta sit in the lobby and wait for the limo. Well, it looks like they want to do it. Deserves it, but uh, that's up to them. That's going to be up to them. President Biden said he was running because you were running here. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt that. They don't want me to run. You know, it's very oh interesting. Uh, with <laughs> she just wants a picture, and he's like, "Let me excuse me. I'm going into muscle memory about my stupid shit." What they're doing? Democrats are funding Nikki Haley. Democrats are funding Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Everybody wants to run against Biden. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are you okay? Everything? Did that picture turn out good? The one where I wasn't even looking and I was I never stopped a moment to stop talking when during the picture. Did that look good? Hello, everybody. It's an authentic picture of me ignoring you. Those are those are well. I was about to say they're rare, but they're so not. Oh my God! How many of you saw the Sean Hannity piece, dude? You don't think they actually let anybody in that place randomly, do you? Hannity and those guys, like, they either bought out this place or his campaign did. Are you seeing how the people are able to walk up to Trump and just say hi, like they, like, oh yeah, these people are just. Qu Meanwhile, his Secret Service are all around. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it was, was the media there? Were you guys there? I think. Were you at the, huh? No, but, oh, I see. We want Trump! 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 David, are you? I am. I'm, 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 I'm,
he, did he just sign the, I can't see that. Did he just sign the black bill of that hat with a black Sharpie? Hey, David, give me another couple of cards, please. I'll send them, to I'll send them over to some operatives. Thank you. Who likes, who likes David? They're 100 percent behind David. Trump doesn't even know the fucker's last name, and he's going to endorse him. They keep saying he loves the Lord. Dave's not here, man. Well, basically, they're afraid to have me speak because I speak the truth, so they try and gag me never happened in the history of our country, but, you know, they do gag orders because they don't want to hear the truth, they don't want to hear me speak. So in many ways, it's an honor, because if they wanted to hear me speak, they wouldn't do the gag order, right? Well, you can speak a lot, you just can't dox people and threaten their lives. That's the part they don't want you to do. It's a narrow gag order. Thank you for that question. It's a good-looking group of people. I was there when he said it was the, we were a good-looking group of people. So good, good. I was there. I was in basically. I was like in third row. Thank you, everybody. Okay, he's going straight for the hot lady with the kid. Yeah. Yeah. He went, and then the dad took the kid. Look at that. Look at this moment. Just peels through the crowd of the matronlies straight for the hot young mom who was holding the kid. Let me get a look at that kid. And then the dad took the kid and it's like, oh, his dad's right there. Oh, shit. Thank you, everybody. We love you, President Trump. Thank you. We pray for you and your family, mostly Eric, because we're like, he's kind of like the Tin Man, and you're like Dorothy and Toto. No, he hasn't. I don't know what, it, whatever it was, he's, that's bullshit. <laughs> whatever he said he's heard a lot about, no. Nah. I've been hearing a lot about it. Yeah, yeah, I heard a lot of those things. I will. Thank you. I want a picture. I want a picture. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump. President Trump. Thank you for running. Thank you so much for. Thank you for running. What else do you think he has to do? Golf? Taking all this guff you got to take. Yeah, the guff. You know? From these people. And yeah. These people. Including the media. Yeah. Oh, including the media. Yeah. You should probably punch the guy with the camera. Yes. 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 Including the fake, including the fake news. Exactly. You told us that they're coming after us next, Trump. You, you know? told us. Thank you for taking the heat. We're never going to get a chance. We appreciate we're that. We're never going to get a chance. Thank you. You told us that they're coming after us next, Trump, and he says they're never going to get a chance. To give a shit? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the I mean. As soon as they get Trump out of the way, they're going to just drag ass some Postmates driver in Davenport, Iowa. Yeah, DeSantis is an asshole. All the other Republicans are fucking terrible. So when you lose, we got no backup plan. I'm alone. Also, not, not the, not the best kind of, I would just go faux hawk if I was him. Just fuck it. You know what I mean? If you're going to do that, just shave the sides. You, you know his, uh, his cult would love it. They'd all get the same haircut. You got to lobby for those things. Alabama, they lobby. Yeah, they're smart. They lobby. Yeah, they're they're smart. Smart. They lobby. Yeah, yeah, they're smart. They lobby. Yeah. 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 It, they they actually grill food here. I only eat things that can be microwaved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, very diverse crowd. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I've got uh, all of the vote. From white evangelicals to off-beige evangelicals. Uh, I've got front row Joes and uh, rear row Janes. Thank you, sir. What was your name again, David? So the campaign manager of the uh, is that who that guy is of David David X we'll call him uh, who just introduced his wife who uh, well uh, and this guy wants a picture with his wife over there so he's trying to can I get a picture of you with the I'm gonna leave go. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, let's see. Okay, nice to meet you. Redheads creep me out, but I'll take the picture anyway. Yeah, it's the tallest city in Iowa. Everybody there is at least 6'2". He's done. <laughs> He's over it. <laughs> He's filling his diaper right now. That's what's happening. He's literally. <laughs> He's just, uh, hold on. Nope, wrong one. Hold on. <laughs> what's happening in my pants right now? I made a stinky. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like the endorsement? Oh no, you're you're the fake news media. So I would. Yeah, yeah. Fake news. Are you the fake news? So who are you with? Who do you work with? That's very good. Oh, you're, fake news. you're the fake news. Who are you with? Uh, from uh, with the local bag and blah blah blah. Oh, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's good fake news. Yeah. You think I should endorse? You don't want to comment on that. That would be a big endorsement. We need. That'd be a big endorsement. Yeah. David's a. Let me tell you, David's a very good man. Yeah. Tell us about David. Apparently, he's he's a man of God. Yeah. He's a very good man, David. If you haven't met David, I'm a big fan of his worth. Uh, um, on um, CSI Miami or uh, with Goliath. Uh, there's, uh, David's been around, so his time with Pink Floyd, um, um, you know, and, uh, of course, you know, <clears throat> uh, he's, he, so he, his t ha time hanging out with that organization he formed, the Branch Davididians. Um, I, I met him. I met him and he took a picture with me in my Christmas hat. <laughs> Now all I have to do is burn that lock of his hair I took. And the spell will be complete. Next time he sees me, I'll be standing in the middle of Mar-a-Lago in my underpants, holding a rabbit and a carrot and a and a and the Kama Sutra. You guys doing the Secret Service shuffle. I gotta post that picture immediately before he keels over. They're over it. I didn't realize Harry and Megan were there. Well, obviously everyone, that's what everyone was standing on to look as tall as him. So they bring a step stool everywhere. That explains it, because he really is uh, 60 uh, feet and three inches. Thank you. Would you like me to sign your appetizer? Does everybody look like David around here? You look like David. You have the white hair that David has. Does everybody have that? Would that be, should I endorse white hair in this thing or? You can sell it on eBay. Sell, you can sell it on eBay, I said. It's 
Fabulous. All right, we're almost done with this. Just going to say goodbye for the 19th time. Oh, you're the sports team guy. Oh, and this place has Rasta pasta. I don't know if you can see that. Hold on one second. Uh, I don't know if you can see that up on the up. It's that's that's one of the big dishes is Rasta pasta. It's got uh, it's got a pot sauce and uh, pot in pot sauce, which is you know obviously d fucking licious. Um, Rasta pasta. It's the special today. I think this guy's praying for him, to him. Yeah, he is. He's praying for Trump right in front of Trump, which is Trump's just kind of, Meh, what is this? I don't understand this prayer thing. Is this in the third Corinthians? Or? My last verse. Yeah, see, look at that. They're they're doing the 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 pray hands. This is his little church group thing, and they got a picture of Trump in uh like with a founding fathers wig on. Look at the fucking curls. Jesus Christ, these people are lunatics. Guys, uh, also um the the prayer hands thing at the wrong angle angle. It's, it's got a real Zeke Heil feel to it. You might want to. You might want to put both hands up and put your wrists back. That's how you, it's, it's important distinction in case you, it, you can't have them both forward because if you, then if one hand gets tired, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to have somebody fucking snap a Laura Ingraham picture of me. I mean, it looks like they're highly, this is just fucking stupid. Write down Tony's name. That was beautiful. Thank you for praying for me. Uh, you do realize I'm above God, so... It's kind of like when, when I watch people pray for me, it's like slumming a little. You know what I mean? It's like riding the subway. There's no words for what you just did there, because if I tried... It would be abundantly clear. I don't know what the fuck you're on about. Seriously, what the ever-loving shit is that painting? He didn't even look at it. <laughs> Awful. Okay, so uh, real quick, if I may, let's see if the chat. Where there we go. Let's go back to the chat. Hi guys. Um, <laughs> um, the amount of like glad handing this asset has to do is kind of stunning because he never, he, he never would have, you know, presumed he would have to do the fucking baby kissing shit after his first time. He didn't do it the first time and he just kind of slid in why the fuck he has to do, you know, it, it's clear that his huge lead that everybody talks about is is a is a paper tiger at best. He knows that if there, if he loses an inch, it all collapses. So he's just fucking wearing himself out, clout chasing all over the state, trying to make himself a fucking godfather. It's a mess. Now, um, a, a little sidebar, if I may, uh, and I hope you guys will appreciate this, and I kind of think you will. So, Everybody remembers the firing of Comey and then the replacement of Comey by Christopher Ray by Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, for whatever reason, thought that, you know, he was going to basically install a Roy Cohn everywhere. That was his gig. That's what, that's what he was going to do. He's just going to find sycophants. And, and then he's been talking about it more that that's what he, he directly plans to do. Whereas before he would think it but not say it. Now he's just saying it. But even then, he was still trying to do it. He was under the impression that Whoever they told, whoever the people around him, whether it was Stephen Miller or Bannon or anybody, like they told him, yeah, get this guy in there. It wasn't because they'll be good for the country. 
It's because they'd be good for him. And so the idea was that Christopher Wray was going to be Trump's sycophant. And he hasn't been at all. Now, has he been a good head of the FBI, better than Comer, uh, than Comey, rather? Um, no. I wouldn't, I, I mean, I, it's kind of a wash, honestly. Um, those kind of guys, those kind of career um, FBI guys, all are kind of a bit cookie cutter. Their ideology brings them, you know, from a very specific track. It's like military guys, you know what I mean? You verily, very, you very seldomly, like, Mike Flynn is a, is an odd duck in that he's a fucked up psycho general. Most of them are, they weed them out around the two star level and they're like, all right, this guy's a dipshit. Uh, it is debatable, Gen X George, by the way, whether he's, you know, like the difference between Ray and Comey, but not a huge amount, right? You know, we're not seeing stuff and we're not seeing, we're certainly not seeing Chris Ray, you know, hamstringing the Jan 6 uh, prosecutions or any of that shit. And he certainly hasn't been, you know, on the forefront of pushing to get Trump or some nonsense. He, he certainly didn't like turn on Trump the way Trump thinks he did. And he certainly didn't, you know, soft pedal stuff the way some people were concerned, right? I would argue. So, but you wouldn't know that if you looked at um, how the Republicans are responding. This is, let me show you, this is Mike Lee. Mike Lee was very proud of himself for how he went after Chris Ray. And I want to, uh, just, let's just see if we can see what these assholes are on about. Thanks, Senator Kuhn, Senator Lee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Ray, for being here. <clears throat> In a By the way, I'm, I get the distinct feeling from his tweets anyways that he doesn't mean that. Report issued uh, declassified in August of 2021. The Director of National Intelligence stated, quote, FBI personnel conducted multiple queries of an individual who had the same last name as the FBI personnel conducting the query. And on further investigation, what they learned was that this uh, query was made after this uh, analyst at the FBI had a conversation with his own mother, and his mother expressed suspicions about his father having an affair, cheating uh, 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 on her, uh, uh, having an affair with another woman. And so as a result of that... Uh By the way, uh, I know what you're saying. Uh, I, then I would say we should set all the Jan Sixers free, because clearly... Um, they looked into it, and the, the, this particular analyst admitted that he ran the queries because of this tip from his mother that his dad was having an affair. And he was just seeing if his father had any, his, his dad had any convictions for, uh, I don't for legally, they had a parking ticket in front of the house of the chick he was fucking. Is that the idea? Uh, and uh, because I've got a lot of, like it was a, a second degree adultery conviction in Florida under a different name material to cover, I'd, I'd appreciate if you could give me a yes or no answer to this. Was that analyst terminated? <laughs> yes, let me, I have a organization that's got like 36,000 people in it, and uh, um, who? Uh, I'm not sure that I can recall the specific instance that you're talking about, so I'll have to go look at that and follow back up with you on that. Um, I know that, uh, Mike Lee, I, I recognize, Senator, that you, being a lunatic, will pick random stories that you fixate on, and then somehow, and this seems to be ubiquitous across your entire caucus uh, these days, um, you seem to think that whatever news stories you fixate on, like a psychopath, is the general knowledge news that everyone else is paying attention to, even though from a, from a legal and intellectual and political standpoint, it's like a needle in a haystack, but you're just like, look at the pile of needles, and uh, most of your colleagues don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. So I'll look it up. And do you know whether the analyst's security clearance would have been revoked? And this is the, where he gets to do the would have been revoked. Uh, again, say there's a process, I suppose. I, one would guess that if he was found guilty of this or whatever, he would either be reprimanded or found guilty. <laughs> let answer, but let me check into that and we'll, we'll circle back to hey, whatever you, we can share. Let me ask it to you this way. Uh, yes or no? Let me ask you to the to you this way. Uh, would abuse of Section 702 by an FBI employee would that be something that would warrant the revocation of security clearance? Kind of depends. I'll give you an example. 
guy looks up stuff on his dad because his mom thinks dad has been cheating, which is a violation of that thing. Guy also has the best record at ki- catching serial killers and domestic terrorists in his entire section. For whatever it's worth, this dude is just wired that way. And we have a choice. We can totally eliminate him from the process because his mom asked this thing and he made thing. We get a normal thing, by the way, we would reprimand other people for. Or we could take your advice and ditch this fucking dude and let the three serial killers he's hot on the trail of skate. Or money launderers, drug and gun runners, fentanyl fucking sales operations. We'll let those fucking slide uh, because you're, you've picked this out as an example of because this happened, the entirety of the FBI is just a run amok with all these things. And by the way, if they had, of course, you wouldn't even fucking know about this. Well, certainly abuse. Uh, I think we'd have to know what the circumstances were. Sometimes people have used terms like abuse in this discussion when it's been something other than what I would call abuse. But there have been, that's why we have this accountability procedures that have cascading This example that I've given you is abuse. I assume you would uh, not disagree with that. Now, the... <laughs> well, it, it's, it's a misuse. Abuse... I don't know if he if he if he found out his dad was fucking somebody else because his mom asked about it and then he used the he fucking used he retasked a satellite to find him and then he popped him like Osama bin Laden or or fucking sent a SWAT team out with a false gun report that would that would move I think swiftly into the zone of abuse this would be misuse reprimand don't do it again lesson learned September of 2023 peak. Whoa, September 23rd. Okay, this is just recent. This is hot. Club report disclosed two additional intentional incidents. Two uh, in additional intentional incidents. Uh, intentional wrong searches from 2022. One in- Intentional wrong searches. I, I hope that that's what they're called. That legally, hashtag intentional wrong searches. It's from 2022 in which two analysts conducted queries seeking information about a person who was a potential tenant of a rental property owned by one of the analysts. And another instance from... Tw- oh, so they ran a background check instead of hiring a background check company because they have the machine that does background checks. And so they ran a query on, on this dude instead of paying for it, which is what you'd have to do because they're sitting there in front of the computer. 2022, in which an NSA analyst conducted... By the way, uh, that person, I'll have you know, uh, the, the tenant never got the apartment and was picked up by a black helicopter, flown to uh, Guantanamo, and is still in a stress position to this day. Now, would we call that abuse? I don't know. Did ...queries on two occasions, seeking information about two individuals that the analyst himself had met through an online dating service. Were the FBI employees who conducted those two illegal searches, were they terminated? Well, those wouldn't be Ill- illegal searches necessarily unless they got a... They faked a warrant or something like that. I mean, I, if they just looked them up, again, that would be misuse, not abuse. Well, you lost me there for a minute. You referred to an NSA analyst? <laughs> yeah. That, we're running into the other thing, too, where these assholes don't even know what organization he works for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, NSA. You know, the people at NSA where you, you don't work or do shit. Uh, have you fired those people that you don't have the ability to fire? Or even hired them after they were fired by someone that does have the capacity to fire them? Fuck. So, uh, NSA analyst, do you know whether anyone at the NSA... uh, uh, No. No, he would not know. The the National Security Agency is not going to share fucking HR... Maybe they had lunch. Maybe they... You know what? I take it back. Maybe Chris Ray and the head of the NSA occasionally have a lunch and then they just bitch about employee problems like any other boss. Was disciplined for that. And if they worked at the FBI, would they be subject to discipline? You bet you. You bet they would. Full leather pants and a whoosh. That kind of discipline. Very kinky. Well, I don't want to get into hypotheticals, but as far as NSA analysts, I think that would be a question for, for NSA. Now, we're FBI employees. Which is basically, uh, if you don't speak Chris Ray, uh, that's him calling you a dumbass. Was uh, involved in those. Uh, uh, and if they had been, would there... If, if this did happen the way I said, and there was no mitigating circumstances, and I'm portraying it exactly how it happened, and 
the people that did it had a history or were somehow below the standard for everyone else's HR level uh, as far as investigation. To, were they were not summarily fired on the spot, I think, something like that? or Security clearances have been terminated. Well, again, I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals, but we have... Uh, the, we have both the disciplinary process. Well, yeah, which would be the uh, use versus abuse part. By the way, I would like you to enjoy how angry Mike Lee gets in just a moment. Now, uh, Mike Lee doesn't get angry because of something that necessarily he says or can't say. He gets mad because Mike Lee is dumb, and I think it's just him lashing out from a brain cramp. Which is separate from the security clearance yeah. process, and somebody who uh, takes... Uh, who engages in a I, compliance violation uh, related to 702 could be relevant to both. I understand. Yeah. I, I would hope that the default answer would be yes, they'd be subject to having their security clearance stripped. They they are subject to it, That's but they have to go through the disciplinary process, and he doesn't know where that is in this because you're just fucking pulling this out of your ass. And in some cases, they don't even fucking work at the FBI. And be subject to dismissal. Now, in an April 2022 opinion, the, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court noted the following searches of Americans' communications. Mm -hmm. 19,000 donors to a particular congressional campaign, 133 Americans participating in civil unrest and protests uh, in the summer of 2020, and um, Americans who were in the vicinity of the Capitol, uh, not necessarily inside the Capitol, but in the vicinity of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. The DNI's semi-annual assessment of Section 702 disclosed illegal queries conducted in 2019 to 2020, quote, using only the name of a U.S. congressman. The FISA court disclosed two particularly egregious searches from... Uh-oh, we're getting into Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Green zone. Also, by the way, the idea that you were like, they, they, were, they did a, a, a search query on somebody who wasn't in the Capitol but was in the area. I got news for you. These motherfuckers were communicating to people who were outside the Capitol once they were inside multiple times. Some of them via Facebook, Facebook Messenger. Some of them they were just fucking FaceTiming with. Of course, there's going to be a query. The minute you con if you're in the fucking Capitol and you contact someone or you had already texted them that day and they're doing a scan on your phone, they're going to go, does this motherfucker have backup? And they're going to check the last three people they were in contact with in the last 48 hours in the area just to ping where the fuck they are if they have that ability at all. So if, on a day where, you know, three to 5,000 people stormed the fucking Capitol and 100,000 showed up, that number surprises people, especially when it was like the same query on on this, you know, multiple queries on the same phone. In June of 2022, an analyst conducted four queries of 702 information using the last names of a U.S. senator and of a state senator without further limitation. On October 25th, 2020, a staff's operations specialist ran a query using the social security number of a state judge who had, quote, complained to FBI about alleged civil rights violations perpetrated by a municipal chief of police. Which uh, sounds rather Trumpy, I'm just going to say. I'm, let me guess. Uh, Biden appointee, uh, <laughs> of the judge, and the uh, person in the FBI, Biden, uh, you know, big, big Trump fan. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing they... The, the Biden administration would really instruct the fucking FBI to do is go after people who are helping people with their civil rights. It's totally on brand. Close quote. Were the FBI employees who conducted those illegal searches terminated or did they have their security clearances stripped? Yes or no? Again, I don't know that I can speak to specific instances, but what I can tell you, and I guess is important to this exchange, is that all of the instances you just listed off all involved conduct that occurred before the reforms that before we put in reform. place. You're, before the reforms you put in place, reforms, the text of which we don't even have access to. Reforms that you've put in place. I've been on this committee. By the uh, again, I don't know why the text part of it is like, this is just weird bullshit, but they've drafted and, ex and expressed what the, what the reforms are to the committee multiple times internally. The, the idea is that there's not some sort of like OSHA thing that they stick up at the fucking door like, these are the new conduct rules per post-Trump, current Biden, whatever. For 13 years. During Hold on, wait, what? Reforms that you've put in place. I've been on this committee for 13 years. 
During the entirety of those 13 years, I've expressed concerns Two FBI directors appointed by presidents of both political parties and three different presidential administrations. Every darn one of them has told me the same thing. Don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's No, they haven't. And by the way, if they were, it was about different shit. Also, how is, how is anyone else Ray's fault? For real. They just implemented these things in the last year. That's his point. Never different. You haven't changed. Yes, Christopher Ray, you have not changed since you were Comey or his predecessor. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed. I've been here. You've been sitting here for 13 years telling me the same bullshit. To have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. Well, and also, he was appointed by Donald Trump, so I think that would be the reason. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens... Uh, Debatable. that, ...that they were fired, or that they had their security clearance stripped. Because, again, if they... Let's say this is one of these people made a query... Uh, but it was not a query that was outside available information if you paid for a background check someplace, that they just, what they basically did was get access to that stuff for free, but didn't violate their their civil rights. The same thing. If you have a tenant or you checked up on your dad, you could buy one of those, one of those queries from someplace. Now, in 2022, FBI and other agencies searched Americans' communications over 200,000 times. There are 340 million of us only 16 of which were evidence of a crime only searches were evidence of a crime only searches so some of them were evidence of a crime plus that returned information i'd like to ask you to to give a, a yes or a no uh, answer to these questions were the three related batch queries consisting of over, over 23,000 separate queries relating to the events of January 6th, were those evidence of a crime only queries, yes or no? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer, what is, I can't, what, the answer is no, I, what I do I, know the answer. The answer what, is no. Were there 141 okay. I, queries for the activists arrested in connection with the uh, George Floyd protests uh, here in Washington, D.C., evidence of a crime only queries? Those were non-compliant queries, uh, and again, they all predate the reforms that we've put in place, which, which before echo we... Which other reforms that every, other FBI directors which have told me about to, every darn year. If How I may... The, you cannot lie to me the way the other... They always leave. You always leave. He's getting very dangerously close to the Glenn Close boiling a rabbit um, reflex. 19,000 donors to a political campaign. The answer there is no. What about the query for a sitting member of Congress? Well, again... What if it was like a, a a fraudulent campaign? That was the idea. Was that it? And it'd be because some of them you might contact because they're a witness. Some people you might contact because they were defrauded. Others you might contact through that query because they were willing participants in a money laundering scheme. The answer there is no. so. You, and you don't know who's who until you actually investigate it. Oh, what about the query involving you, U.S. Senator? Which, for all we know, could be any one of us. Yeah, it's probably you. That's, you seem testy. I'm going to guess it's you or Ted Cruz. Answer is no. And so what, what does that tell me? Well, uh, what I mean... Tells, you that, it tells me that you're still mad at James Comey. Hearing. And what these data points all point to is that a warrant requirement or prohibition relating to, quote-unquote, evidence of a crime-only queries would not have been uh, something that would have prevented any of the most egregious examples of the abuse that we've seen under Section 702. So, I made notes here. The FBI is is making me mad. Already required to obtain a court order in some circumstances. In some, bef- so not all. For accessing the contents of Americans' communications in the context of 702, they're already required for that in some circumstance. In some, so they're not required to get a court order in, in other areas of 702. So that's why they're abroad abilities within it, within whatever guidelines they have, are based on the judgment of the people involved. So you can have bad judgment and good... This is not... I don't even know why the fuck he's arguing with Chris Ray now. This is a problem for Congress. Redraft 702 if you have a problem, stupid. 
Since 2018, how many times has that requirement been triggered according to government reporting? Do you know? You're talking about the so-called F2? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, how many times has it been triggered? Yes. I think it. I think there have been two instances where I think is maybe the number. 100, 103. Yeah. 103 times yeah. it's been triggered. And out of those 103 identified times, uh, the FBI should have obtained a court order. How many times did the FBI actually obtain one? Do you know? But that, I think the answer is none. Zero. So you're telling me that the FBI has completely ignored the limited court order requirement that it's already subjected to. You have the audacity to come here, and you told us. Yeah, m some of this, by the way, I would like to remind you, predates Ray's time, I think. That getting, uh, adding a warrant requirement to 702, even for queries involving U.S. persons on U.S. soil, that that would amount to some sort of unilateral disarmament. Oh, okay, so... So in the 13,000 plus or whatever, and in these other batches, we're not even talking about American sources. We're talking about foreigners on American soil or engaging in business in the United States from overseas. That, you have a lot of gall, sir. Yes, you do, Mr. Comey. I mean, uh... This is disgraceful. It is. The Fourth Amendment requires more than that, and you know it. I know every single time for centuries, even prior to the founding of this country... Mm. Do you? There are similar protections built into the laws of the United Kingdom before we became a country. N no. Even then, the government was making the same darn argument you're making today. N no, they aren't. <laughs> the, uh, uh, under, under King George, there were no limits on privacy of citizens and what the ever-loving shit? Which is, it's too hard. This would make it hard for the government. I don't think the, I don't think the king ever argued that. I don't think most, most monarchs never argued about how difficult it was to, to thread the needle between individual rights and, and pri privacy protections. What the ever-loving fuck are you talking about? How is this, how is this even a, how is this a thing? How are you even saying this out loud? Why we have a I mean, obviously, you can tell by the look on his face that he has talked himself into a corner. Constitution, sir, and you must comply with it. Mr. Chairman, may I respond briefly? <laughs> when you ask why are things different this time, I would point you again to the findings of the court and the department themselves, both of which have not been shy about identifying some of the same instances that you cited in our colloquy they themselves have observed the effectiveness of the reform, which is why the uh, pre versus post. Which, by the way, uh, Mike Lee and everybody and his staff and Ted Cruz and all these people, they have access to both the court's rulings about the provisions to see if they go far enough or whatever. Like, this is just fucking stupid. Data, the reforms becomes very. I mean, the best part is just that Mike Lee somehow thinks that monarchies gave a rat fuck about personal privacy. <laughs> significant. So that's number one. Second, second, uh, as to your claims about constitutionality, I would point you back to what the case law actually shows on this subject, which is that no court has found 702 in its current form to be uh, unconstitutional, and every court to have looked at it has found it to be constitutional. Well, and last point. How lucky last for you, point, because no one has standing to do that. No I'm so mad. No one knows when they're. Guys, you don't even know. Being surveilled. Come on. Yeah, but I got that is not but what an argument last, sir. It, I don't know last point mr. chairman good lord uh, is that in some of the instances and you went through a number in your uh, questions in some of the instances in particular that I know about uh, those are instances where the queries were run in order to get to a public official member of Congress to warn them about foreign influences targeting yes, them. And a warrant would not have enabled that. We yeah. call those consent searches. And consent searches do not require a warrant, sir. And you know that. R right. There is nothing that you have done that is not entirely within the FBI's control and supervision. You're he. He is the F FBI director. You realize that. Ask me to believe something that is not believable because your your agency has made it unbelievable. <laughs> I don't even know. This is unbelievable. I don't understand what the what you even think you mean. 
it's bad enough when somebody just it misreads what someone else is doing. I don't even know what the fuck he's arguing at this point. And I refuse to accept it. Well, yes. Uh, well, good. Because I, I just hope that's not in a category with things like gravity. He's so mad. And by the way, this is a thing. This is that I wanted to show you guys as an example of hashtag the best people. And of course, that Christopher Ray was uh, Donald Trump's personal choice to head up the FBI after he he bounced Comey because if he hadn't, he would have been in jail a long time ago in his own admission or his own thought. And uh, these fucking guys, I guess they were expecting Ray to be a sycophant and, and you know, and, and about face the FBI. And, and they're like, nobody trusts the FBI anymore. That's because you trusted him to carry out the whims of Donald Trump, not follow the Constitution. That's why they've lost trust in the FBI. Not because of anything the FBI has done that's different than any other shit the FBI has done. And arguably, by all measures, it's better that it was, it gets better all the time. Most, you know, most of the time. There's probably some rollbacks that we, around the Patriot Act that were concerning. But since the 60s, I think we've clearly seen that the, gu the guardrails have gotten tighter on what the FBI can do and the limitations of it. And because they don't have a, you know, effectively a material like a military arm, the U.S. Marshals handle most of it, that the tug and pull between those two organizations really does keep things from getting out over their skis like Waco or Ruby Ridge or something again. Like after the reform, reforms around those things, it, it, it's, a, it's a lot of slow rolls. As a matter of fact, it should arguably move a little faster. Oh my God, just the, the bitching. Uh, it's just fucking embarrassing. Anyways, but in the meantime... You guys are lovely. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, we looked at Trump walking around Davenport, Iowa, and we looked at the Mike Lee's flip out. Um, now, let's let's drop in on uh, the most miserable man in America and his guest, uh, James, James, James Gum, James, John Grant. I think I got a business card. Um, it, this is the whole thing about the truck payments or whatever that's uh, a year and a half old from the Washington, uh, no, sorry, the, yeah, New York Post story, stuff that was allegedly on the hard drive. Again, who gives a shit? Also happened during 2018. Today, the House Oversight Committee uh, firmly uh, used a shoehorn to shove its own head up its own ass. Releasing subpoenaed bank records that show Hunter Biden's business entity, a Wasco PC, made direct yeah, monthly this, right? payments to Joe Biden. Three of them. In, in ex Because his dad had picked up the payments for three months and he repaid them month to month. Thank you, Congressman Comer. <laughs> Thank you, Comer, for that wonderful graph. <laughs> Republican chair of the House Oversight Committee from Kentucky. That's exactly what he did today. <laughs> it was magic. Fucking magic. They've been investigating the Biden... Yeah, they've been looking at this, and look what they've got now. A little box that Hunter is riding like a like a, a $2,000 night hooker, and Joe Biden trapped in a little square. It's for months now, and they're coming up with all kinds of smoking guns, and I think this is one of them. <laughs> do you? You do realize that smoking guns aren't a matter of opinion, right? Right? That That's... A, by very definition, it's like uh, it's like catching someone blue-handed. I don't know. It looks kind of reddish to me. A Wasco. That is a company started by Hunter Biden. What do they do? Uh, basically, they just take checks and issue checks. Okay. okay. It's his. It's his law firm. Okay. It's no goods, no services, but it is Hunter Biden's company. And now we know that automatic payments were set up. Oh, automatic through. In what what year is that? That's uh. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't go back further than this. Maybe, I don't know, three years, four years, maybe eight years. Nowhere in that zone. This form, an ACH, an automatic clearinghouse form from a Wasco to Joseph R. Biden. Yes, indeed. Oh, ba bam! From a Wasco. Oh shit! There's company too. Oh my God! 
Joe Biden. At the time in 2018, he was the former vice president of the United States. Yes, he was the former vice president of the United States. As in former, as in not a public official in any capacity. $1,380 a month. Fuck, man. I, 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 look, I knew he was a cheap date, but the Chinese got off early. Maybe with the, maybe with the exchange rate, this was a lot of yuan. Monthly. Oh my God. Automatic. For how long? Payments. We all know about automatic payments. We do. Whether you're on a pension or you have a job, everybody gets paid through automatic uh, deductions, right? No, they don't. It, it, it happens automatically. First, uh -huh. first to set it up, though, you got to send the bank a check, right? And that's what Joe Biden did, according to the House Oversight. Mm -mm, he didn't send it to him. He got it while he was there. I mean, there's a very strong chance that Hunter was at the House and went, can I take one of these and I'll just... Committee. That is Joseph R. Biden. It says void. They blacked out the ABA, the routing number, the account, right. account number, and all that stuff. All that stuff, because it that's wise. But this is a big deal. No, it's not. It's $1,300 a month for three months. It is. It isn't. They're going to pretend it's not. I'm, nobody's pretending. It simply isn't. Don't fall for it. Uh, well, it's too late. Actually, they're going to just pretend it never happened. No, it happened. We just don't give a fuck. Owasco, first off, got money from China. This right, but other sources as well. He's had the company for a long time. This was established a while back. The mm -hmm. Northern International Company, a uh, capital firm in China, mm -hmm. funneled $5 million to Hudson West 3. Who, uh, um, North Northern International Capital, by the way, is a uh, subsidiary of the Sovereign Wealth Fund of China, the CIC, um, which is one of the ways they put money into the system and who uh who was president when the standards were loosened and they were able to put more money into the system it's when all that weird those real estate buys that were happening by the chinese government that everybody's flipping out about now that now that biden's in office and they'd already been bought and money would routinely flow from hudson west to owasco and now we have this connection routinely you have one check and two Joe Biden. Um, now, the House Oversight Chair did say something that wasn't, in my opinion, didn't capture the spirit of what's going on. Listen. Yeah, this is probably, I mean, he does look a little dumb. Listen to this. Okay, listen to this. Here it is. This doesn't quite, I don't want to let you guys down. This doesn't quite capture the spirit. This wasn't a payment from Hunter Biden's personal account, but an account for his corporation that received payments from China China money. And other shady corners of the world. And other shady corners of the world. China being a shady corner, which is why Ivanka has uh, trademarks there and the Trumps have multiple investments there. And Trump had a secret bank account there that got $17 million in it while he was president. This was actually very personal for Hunter Biden. The no, it was very personal. The company was called Owasco. It was so personal and not public that he that it occurred when his dad wasn't even a public official anymore. Owasco. Here, uh -huh. just, just to prove that, uh, Hunter Biden, co-chairman of Owasco. Yeah, it's a shot of him signing it using DocuSign. Go PC. Now, what is Owasco? It means something to Hunter. Uh, back when he was a kid, he would go to the Finger Lakes in upstate New York, a bunch of north-south running lakes, very famous here in New York State. Uh-huh, which is, of course, owned now by China. So he went there as a kid because his mom, his birth mother, Natalie, was born there in a place called uh, Scanetalese, I believe. Right. So he named his company after the birthplace of his dead mother. Tread lightly, dumb fuck. Her name was Nelia, sorry. Very close to Owasco. Now... All of Hunter's shell companies have been named for these various lakes where his grandparents lived and he would spend the summer. Well, it's, it, I got to say, if that's your plan for creating a uh, money laundering scheme, I certainly wouldn't, when it comes to banking, um, name your company after places your mother lived while she lived under her maiden name. And how personal is this to him? I mean, really personal. Look at Hunter Biden's back. See that back? Those are tat Those aren't scars. That's what I first thought. They're at it's actually a tattoo of the Finger Lakes. It matches with the Finger Lakes. Cool. And there's Owasco. All right. So this is a this is pretty serious stuff. 
Actually, I gotta say, I did not know about these tattoos, and that's kind of badass. Now, the media, they will not be swayed. No matter what you show them, they will dismiss it. What am I, what am I supposedly dismissing here? Again, if you're talking about these people setting up shady, under the table, never heard of it, quiet little, you know, like universal exports, like they're fucking James Bond, then the more personal it gets, the more full of shit these charges seem. What they haven't found is any evidence that President Biden, you know, did favors for Hunter Biden's clients or that he benefited in any way. Right. There's been no evidence of ties to the president or any uh, evidence of any wrongdoing on the part of Joe Biden. There's no evidence so far that ties Joe Biden to any of this, uh, at least nothing that they have brought forward. Nothing that they have brought forward. Well, how about going to look for some? <laughs> you do. <laughs> what do you mean going to look for some? Who? Is Biden supposed to go look for ways to incriminate himself because you fucking can't find any? What are you talking about? They are so lazy. <laughs> Why won't they? Go we can't find the crimes. Why won't they go find the crimes for us? What the fuck is going on? Why do I have to do all this myself? Journalism is hard. And dumb reporters these days. And they're so entitled. <laughs> Entitled? Motherfucker, you're asking them to go look for you. You have to bring it to me. Remember the old days, Woodward and Bernstein? They right. But you do realize they actually found shit. Stayed in Washington the summer of 19... You know, the, the plumbers actually broke in to the Democratic headquarters. There, there were recordings of Nixon that were found that corroborated this. They had an insider who was actually working with Nixon who gave this away, not somebody who was a disgruntled, Trumpy FBI or, or IRS agent who was like, why the fuck can't we just bust this guy on shit evidence? In 72, sweating it out. They don't do that anymore, but... N no, they don't. Uh, is Like you do? This is significant. This is real. No, it isn't. No, it's not. I have to go through the denial, though. Hunter Biden's attorney, Abby Lowell, says this. The truth is Hunter's father helped him when he was struggling financially at the age of 49 due to his addiction and could not secure credit to finance a truck. This is all about a truck payment. Next, please. When Hunter was able to, he paid his father back and, and took over the payments himself. Yeah, there were three payments. And then from that point on, the exact same payment went to the leasing company. Uh, the $1,380 he was getting every month. And this is just a little sign. It was all for a truck payment, right? Because Joe, out of the goodness of his heart, bought his 49-year-old son a truck. And whenever these issues come up, they do what Abby Lowell just did, what Joe Biden did in the debate. Claim the addiction. Look for sympathy. <laughs> Nobody gives this. Nobody's worried about sympathy in this fucking situation. They're explaining the actual payment. It was, dude, it's $4,400 in total. Gentlemen, my son, and he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's 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 fixed it. He's worked on it, and I'm proud of him. Yeah, that's uh, that's like I think that's like fatherhood. That's what love looks like. That's what a father who actually gives a shit about his son would look like, which you don't recognize in any fucking way because. You have no friends and you're surrounded by people all day, every day who can't fucking stand you. And you love Donald Trump because of his stiff arming of his own children. I think that's literally a get out of jail free card. That's N no, he's not going to jail. There's no crime at all. What he wants it to be. You know, if the dudes. All right. You can't have the bag man paying him four thousand dollars for the truck that he actually owns when Biden's already passed that hump where he's got two houses because of his book deal, dumbass. What the fuck? Where's the... What would be the life-changing factor? Why would he fucking flush a 50-year career in politics down the fucking toilet for four grand, you dumbass? Joe were a compassionate, empathetic man. Would he have let his drug addict son travel the world with him? Yes. To keep an eye on him, dumbass. Because when he left him to his own devices, 
He got in with people like Devin Archer and Bobolinsky and all these fuckers, and they were all in. They were all drinking, and when they drank, they would just drink and fuck around. When he drank and fucked around, he started using drugs. So yes, yes, you would you would have your son on a short fucking leash. You would keep him as close as possible. His other son was dead. You fucking chimp. Meeting leaders all over the place, doing business for himself. We've shown you this video before. Joe gets off the front of the plane and Hunter lurks around in the background, country after country. Lurks around. This man suffering from a serious addiction, I'm told, is this is not a kid who's just touring the world with his grandfather. This is a guy who has business to do and he can do the business because his father is the vice president of the United States. There he is with the ambassador, Joe. Everything looks great. Guess who we're about to see? Hunter, get in the back of the limousine. Where is he? There he is. You think he's there? That's He's walking with Jill, dumb fuck. Just um, go to Oktoberfest, have some beer. All right, so you know what we're talking about here? This no, I don't. Is what we're talking. Now, oh, their excuse for all this. They mentioned the loan repayment. That's their excuse for everything these. <laughs> well, it's because that's the only stuff you guys go after because everything else has regular tax stuff attached Dave, to it. Any weird money that's coming Joe Biden's weird money way, it's a loan repayment. Just a couple of weeks ago, a $200,000 check from James Biden to Joe Biden. A loan repayment. Uh, a $40,000 check from uh, Sarah Biden, his sister-in-law. It's just a loan repayment. Oh, and by the way, I just want to be abundantly clear. I don't give a rat fuck about the loan repayment part of this. Because it happened in 2017 and 2018 when Joe Biden didn't work in the fucking government at all. And they write it on the check. I don't care. 2017, 2018. I don't, I don't even have to dig this shit up. And they think, yeah, okay, it's a loan repayment. No, they think, what the fuck business of mine? It's 2017, 2018. This is the one, again, think about how long Joe Biden has been in office. And these motherfuckers can only find a window of suspicion of suspect payments of money changing hands. And it only happens during the one and a half year he's either not in office or not running. That's the only fucking time when he's not going to run for president and he's not going to run for office again. That's that. He's basically retired. There was a year and a half that window. And all of this happens in that window. All of it. That's all it takes. Jesus. No. Here's what uh, all it takes is it's 2017 and 2018. I don't give a fuck. Um, you know what Abby Lowell and others are citing as evidence that this was a low, that this was a loan repayment? I don't care. The laptop. <laughs> they're taking material from the Hunter Biden laptop. No, they're taking material from the laptop he gave to the IRS. Saying it's just a loan repayment. It says right there, a loan repayment. You know, I never uh well, if I did, I don't. But if I got illegal uh, income, I would not label it illegal income. You find another way to clean it up. Also, Yeah, but you also wouldn't run it through the company named after your dead fucking mother. Known as money laundering. I want to see that truck. Did Hunter need this to get to and from work? That's a pretty sweet truck. I, I agree. I wonder. A 2018 Ford Raptor. Right. Is that the actual one? How about that Porsche? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't drive that one. I wouldn't drive that Porsche in the snow. Did Hunter need a, did he need a car? Didn't somebody give him $142,000, some weirdo in Kazakhstan? Yeah, but I, I think he might've sold that car. Yeah, you can look it up. That happened too. Yeah, I haven't seen the car since. Uh, Have you? Show a picture of it. Show us a picture of him driving it. Yeah, put that, put it in a little album with pictures of the laptop and send them my way. But it's actually getting harder and harder to look these things up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were supposed to be a sweaty journalist like Woodward and Bernstein. Because the New York Times will not acknowledge much of this. <laughs> much of what? They look the other way. At what? The New York Times is a full-time get Trump machine. No, right now they're busy shitting on Israel, but... And here's something we have to work on in the conservative world. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were doing news. Too often, conservatives are reliant on the New York Times. The <laughs> no shit. Mainstream media. No shit. If they you mean all the times you fucking cite it? Don't make it a story. Well, then it's not a story. 
they have to make it a story, and then we complain about it. But if they don't make it a story, we don't make it a story. This isn't a story. That's a problem. No, it isn't. Well, I mean, I suppose it is for conservative media because maybe this is just the first time Greg is realizing he's not a newsman. He's a fucking barnacle. We got to work on that. We do certainly here at Newsmax. We <laughs> do you? Don't fall for that trap, but no. here's an example of it. Okay. You know, the Mueller report? Yes, very much. Dominated headlines for, what, two years? That whole uh -huh. phony story, 1,006 articles. Have you ever read it? Greg, have you read the Mueller report? And then the Durham report drops. And the Durham report, what does it Ass. do? It absolves, and they write three articles about it. And what, is the, what does the conservative media do? The Durham report basically held the FBI, said all kinds of problems there. They lied, they cheated, they stole. No, it was a lot of prose. Six articles in the Wall Street Journal, five articles in my beloved New York Post. Folks, we have to do something. We have got to be on it. Yeah. Here's a good idea, Greg. Read the fucking Durham report and do your own special breakdown of it. I've done it a myriad of times with all sorts of different articles and different papers that were, not even articles, actual, you know, documents that were put out by the government. Like, I've, I've gone through the fucking Paris Climate Accord. You could do that. You could do the whole thing. Of course, if you did that, you'd have to realize that uh, the entire climate accord says, you know, if financially feasible and doesn't damage your country is attached to every provision. And that's even a matter of opinion, which gives you all the fucking wiggle room in the world. But uh, uh, then you can't sell it to, uh, as a scare tactic to your fucking You know, people. the liberals are so disciplined. They all go in the... We are. We like discipline. Bondage a little better, I got to say. But some discipline's nice. You know, not too hard. Same direction. Conservatives, we're not like that. We are... Yeah, you're just uh, scattered cats. Or about freedom of thought. <laughs> yes, freedom from uh, structure, logic, reason. So we aren't... Un the ability to understand irony or sarcasm. Uh, necessarily all on the same page. Yeah, you're not necessarily all on the same uh, fucking bus floor licking gum from under the seats. And we go in different directions. Yes, you do. But there are some key issues we got to be kind of in sync on. Yeah, yeah. What are those? And Biden family corruption is one of them. Yeah, get in sync, guys. Uh, and then that, if you really get together in what's the, if if you could form sort of a community, not a, not a community, it's more bigger than that. If the if the right wing, and with uh, of course Greg is the leader, could form like a commune, like a commune, right? A commune of conservatism that kind of creates a um, maybe a like a, a system that they could all operate under. I'm spitball. Call it communism, for example, that they could all as conservatives uh, build a, a communist um, structure where they all work together for one goal, sharing the burden equally. And then, you know, some of them who, you know, obviously are lazy and don't want to work very hard can just barnacle off the other conservative media people just that, you know, help keep them afloat. That would, if we could make that, happen that'd be good now to me this is evidence as well it's not hard and fast as a document or anything like that y yeah it's, it's therefore it's not evidence but watch what happens when they question hunter biden about possible wrongdoing his reaction compared to donald trump how hunter biden he reacts i believe donald trump is innocent in fact I <laughs> no kidding know it do you how do you know it i believe joe biden is guilty watch how they react it's, it's pretty wild. We did nothing wrong. This is a whole hoax. This is just like the Russia, Russia, Russia deal. This is like the fake dossier. But here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question. Why did you take those? Yeah. I'm, uh, first of all, this is when Biden's running. And he's right. And this was when his, like, by, uh, Trump's rhetoric was getting very violent. Documents with you when you left the White House. I had every right to under the Presidential Records Act. You have the Presidential Records Act. I was there and I took what I took and it gets... Took, I took things. I don't know what I took, but I took it. Declassified. That's not true. You're saying things you do not know what you're talking about. No one said that. Who said that? All I know is this. Everything I did was right. 
We have the Presidential Records Act, which I abided by 100 percent. I have the right to declassify as president. Were you involved? Were no, you involved? I, 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 I don't know. Were you? No. What does that say? It sounds like one person is just convinced he can bullshit his way through it and knows that everybody around him is he's surrounded by sycophants and doughheads all the fucking time. So he just feels like same bullshit story. I'll just say hoax, hoax, hoax and Russia, Russia, Russia and witch hunt and that shit. And that should do it. And the other one is, is pissed that these fuckers are wasting his time while a major issues are happening. It depends on your perspective to me. Yes, it does. Of course, because you being a Trump ball gargler, um, are convinced that no matter what evidence they find. And by the way, Trump had classified documents at Mar-a-Lago that he fought to keep secret. It wasn't even that they they were present there. It's that he lied to the government about having them. Again, did not declassify them. Otherwise, he, his people would not have returned them in a red weld envelope because you don't have to put stuff in it if it's declassified. If his case is it was declassified, he wouldn't have had to return it under, you know, under full cover, period. But this is just, he engaged in a conspiracy. That's what it was. He was hiding this stuff. It, there's evidence directly for that, not just information that you don't like about Joe Biden. It says a lot. One man is innocent, Trump. Another man is guilty, Joe. But let's see what happens. Yeah, here's what's going to happen. Uh, nothing. Trump's going to continue to be indicted. Um, on all these fronts, he's guilty on, you know, three of them he'll more than likely face charges and fines on. He's got civil liabilities, both from Jan Sixers, people who are injured on that day, police officers who were injured on that day that he's going to face. E. Jean Carroll's going to get another $5 million payout, if not a $10 million payout on this next one until the court decides we got to make this number one that sticks with him. And you might end up getting a, uh, what I would call an Alex Jones number. That's what's going to fucking happen. What a tit. Oy. Aggravating. Also, the Presidential Records Act stuff is just so lazy and stupid. It's it, it's hard to even grasp how they think that's a thing, but whatever. Um, hold on. I need to grab one other thing, too, while we're at it. Um, and by the way, whoo, let's see. Um, oh, there's such a, there's a big... Chat going on in the in the staff chat. So you got, okay, sorry. Um, I thought that was about me. I was very excited. Um, <laughs> there is. Let me see. I, I got one. How am I doing on time? Okay, we're good. Um, the yeah, here you go. There's. What do we even bother with? It's like Comer saying the same stupid shit all the time. Anyways, um, let's go. Let's go to the genuine unfunny. That is climate czar John Kerry. Greg. Kelly, or sorry, uh, uh, Greg Gutfeld, who I, <laughs> apparently there is a joke that some people that he made, or I wouldn't call it a joke because the jokes are funny, but uh, an attempt at a joke about John Kerry that has to do with eating crickets and cricket farts. And when he farts, you just hear crickets or something like that. And I think the people are because it was so poorly structured and nobody got to the whole like cricket protein thing. I'm curious if that's what the case is. Um, we'll see. Blowing wind during a climate lecture in Dubai. But did the greenhouse gases that he wanted to eliminate come from within? I find myself getting more and more militant because I do not understand how adults who are in position of responsibility can be avoiding responsibility for taking away those things that are killing people on a daily basis. Mm. And, and the reality is that, um... Yep. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, again, why is it, A, why are we to assume it's coming from him? Or that was even what that noise was? But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but let's pass on the sophomoric humor for a second and get to the bigger picture. Kerry letting one rip on banning coal plants. Now, we don't need that necessarily to tell us we ought to be transitioning out of coal. Transitioning out of coal. That sounds like a ban. There shouldn't be any more coal-fired power plants permitted anywhere in the world. That's how you can do something for health. And the reality is that we're not doing it. Mmm, Lurch also trying to clear the air. Yeah, again, not permitting new ones, 
when they're phasing out anyways, especially in the United States, is not banning them. Um, why would and why would you permit new ones anyways? Whether politics plays a role in his climate crusade. I'm guided by the science. Uh, and I can tell you, honestly, there is zero politics or ideology in any decision that the President Biden has made or the administration has made. We are driven by the science. Mm, something seriously stinks about Biden's green agenda. They want to ban gas cars and force everyone to drive an EV. But get this, it's been two years since Congress gave Biden $7.5 billion to build thousands of EV chargers across the country. But holy Solyndra, that program has yet to install a single charger. Hold on one second. And we'll just jump to this right away because, hold on one second. Um, I'm laying drink. Charging stations. Um, whoop. Biden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, let me see if I can. This is the article that he's talking about. Um, let me go to it. There we go. Let's see. There you go. <clears throat> Biden signed the bipartisan infrastructure package into law in 2021. Um, sorry, specifically, let me look at this. Um, with uh, $7.5 billion specifically directed towards EV chargers, with an eye towards achieving his goal of building 500,000 chargers in the United States by 2030. The United States has around 180,000 chargers today, according to the Energy Department. That includes 41,000 of the type of fast chargers that can alleviate the dreaded range anxiety of long-distance trip of an electric vehicle. In a June study, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory projects the U.S. will need 1.2 million public chargers by 2030 to meet the charging demand, including 182,000 fast chargers. Administration officials insist the pace at which they are rolling out the infrastructure's law, charging funds is to be expected, given the difficulty of creating a brand new program in every state and marshalling the private sector to meet the complex reliability and performance requirements for each federally funded station. The goal is a reliable and standardized network in every corner of the nation, said Gabe Klein, executive director of the Joint Office on Energy and Transportation, which leads the federal government's efforts on EV charging. You have to go slow to go fast. There are things that take a little bit of time, but boy, when they're done, it's going to be com it's going to completely change the game. The bulk of the infrastructure law funds, five billion, are dedicated to building fast chargers along interstate highways under the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. The program requires that the chargers meet a strict set of standards, such as being built at least every 50 miles over major routes, being operational at least 97 percent of the time, and featuring credit card readers for easy payment. But uh, Atish Patel, president of the charger manufacturer Exchange North America, is worried the delays in installing chargers are imperiling efforts to drive up EV adoption. As an EV driver, a charger being installed in two years isn't really going to help me now. We're in dire need of chargers up here. And by the way, they live, uh, you know, borderline off the grid for that. The pace rollout uh, will likely mean that a uh, few federally funded chargers will be in the ground by next year's election. And Republican opponents of the vehicles have seized in the lack of charging infrastructure to attack Biden's efforts. Um, they've railed against subsidies for EVs, infrastructure power, blah, blah, blah. They say the happiest day when they buy it. Like, uh, yeah, that was his bullshit about that part. Um, Consumer demand for electric vehicles is rising in the United States, uh, necessitating six times as many chargers on its roads by the end of the decade, according to federal estimates. But not a single charger funded by the... And this is the other thing, too. Not a single charger funded by the bipartisan infrastructure laws come online, and odds are they will not be able to start powering American vehicles until at least 2024. This is the... So remember that real quick. Let me, let me show you this real quick. But not a single charger, uh, charger funded by the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Okay, hold on. Um, let's see. Then we go to, uh, Biden, um, um, mm -hmm. that is because, um, let's see if I can find this. Yeah. In the, I'm gonna try. Hold on, I'm finding this. Everything comes up on the same page. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure not trying to give you a new charging for EV charging infrastructure installed in low. Yeah, here you go. So the Inflation Reduction Act 
had a tax credit for EG charging, uh, EV charging infrastructure. The Inflation Reduction Act extends the alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit through 2032, giving individuals and all types of organizations tax credits for EV charging infrastructure installed in low-income and rural areas. This is the first ones that are being put out. So the the reason the money has not been spent from the infrastructure bill, besides the fact that it's for like larger chain um uh, like again, every 50 miles or every hundred miles, like hopscotching different places for uh, the availability of the chargers that are there. Um, the reason they aren't being made is because they're still spending money from the rescue plan. That hasn't reached its end yet. And they're planning these other big things, which will take time. We've added, let's see, um, let's see, uh, there was a number on this EV charging stations added since 2022 maybe it was that was it um yeah here you go trends in charging infrastructure there we go let's see if i can bring this up for you this this might be why while most of the charging demand is currently met at home charging, publicly accessible chargers are increasingly needed in order to provide the same level of convenience and accessibility for refueling conventional vehicles in dense urban areas in particular where access to home charging is more limited. Public charging infrastructure is a key enabler to EV adoption. Um, more than... Hold on. Get out of here. Control plus. Get in here. No, maybe not. All right. Uh, at the end of 2022... There were 2.7 million public charging points worldwide, more than 900,000 of which were installed in 2022, about 30, uh, 55% increase in 2021 stock and comparable to the pre-pandemic growth rate of 50% between 2015 and 2019. That's just globally. In the United States, it was like 125,000. I want to find that number for you. Hold on. Uh, let's see. EV charging data added since 21 in the USA. Yeah, number of charging. Uh, yeah, you go. So... The number of charging ports, and this is important to what we're talking about here. The number of charging ports increased more in 2022 than in the preceding three years combined. There's, the numbers for 2023 aren't in yet, but it'll basically be this plus 10% probably. Preceding three years combined with about 54,000 level two and 10,000 level three chargers added during 2022. Here's how many EV chargers the U.S. has. This is uh, 160, uh, there are currently more than 160,000 EV chargers in the United States. Here's how many audio industry data analysts and the S&P Global Mobility think the country will need to install by 2030, which is about 1.2 million. Um, and yeah, the number in 2022, I showed you that already, 54,000 added level two ones and 10,000 level three, which is the fast chargers. S&P Global Mobility says registration data shows that there were uh, 1.9 million EVs on U.S. roads, 0.7% of the 281 uh, million vehicles in operation as of October 31st, 2022. New light vehicle registration share for EV reached 5.2% over the first 10 months of 2022, and rapid growth is going to happen thanks to consumer demand. U.S. government policy that incentivizes EV purchases like the Inflation Reduction Act and increasing investment in investment from the financial sector. How many they need, we uh, could read, let's see, at which point the total number of EVs could be 28.3 by 2030. EV market share for vehicles likely reach 40% by 2030. The group expects there will need to be about 700,000 level two and 70,000 level three chargers deployed by then. There were more level two and three chargers um, put in in 2022 than the previous three years combined. I want you to remember that while these assholes bullshit. Well, well, I'll that breaking news. Now we have breaking wind news. Uh, he who dealt it. Yeah, exactly. Once again. Uh, no, he who smelt it dealt it. Fuck. These people don't even know colloquialisms. It's annoying. We tackle the news no one else will cover. This would this story would not have happened on the five were it not for me being employed by Fox News. <laughs> what? This is true. This is, this is your dream come true segment. Exactly. After 13 years, you finally have the... A fart joke. The producers really understand you, and I think that's a really great step in your relationship. But is this kind of... It's that's, and By the way, uh, nice job, Dana, um, shitting on him figuratively. It, it's an analogy 
isn't it? Or a microcosm of how these climate hysterics are often the biggest offenders when producing carbon emissions, right? <laughs> this one just came out of his- oh, This is the old, by the way, this is the whole thing about how they fly everywhere in private planes, they private planes, and because they fly to these things in private planes, somehow they, they're worse than people who fly coach. Okay, all of them buy, car buy carbon offsets. They all purchase carbon offsets. None of which, by the way, any of these assholes, when they're flying, do as a part of their regular flying or fly airlines based on, you know, that, that have that as part of the strategy that they add to your ticket price, the carbon offset costs. All of John Kerry's flights, all the leaders of the world, when they go to COP, they all buy carbon offset credits, which helps to green the planet and and uh, and grow you know the financial base of green technology but but let's face it he's got he's got tons of boats tons of houses tons of uh private jets flying around. tons of money that he buys carbon offsets for all of it with and he joins bill gates who today wrote in the new york times that very wealthy individuals should also be making changes to their lifestyles to bring their emissions close to zero he says that if you fly in a private jet as I do, mm -hmm. you can afford the extra cost of sustainable aviation flu fuel, fuel made from low carbon crops and waste. I, I would love to see a rich person who raises their hand and says, yes, please get, let me experiment in my plane with crops and waste. Well, I mean, it's interesting. He says waste judge. He's, he's talking about like ethanol based jet fuels and the like, and he does do that. But again, they're not even bringing up the carbon offsets that they all pay for, including Bill Gates. Is he alluding to the fact that one day maybe John Kerry could p power his own jet with his flatulence? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, no, Judge, run with that when one. When you think about it, it was... Yeah, I do think about it. I'm thinking about it right now. It was a few years ago when they said they didn't want us to eat meat anymore because mm -hmm. of the flatulence of cows. That's right. Did they? When did they said that to you? Did they? Right. I mean, they wanted to get rid of all the cows. Yeah, they did. Remember when they wanted to get rid of all the cows? I mean, I'm waiting for when they say, if you're too old and you pass flatulence, we're going to get rid of you too. Mm, That's right. It's ice flow time. That in Canada. They are? <laughs> I don't know. Who I don't know. I just said Canada. <laughs> anyway, but the whole point is, in a year and a half, the Carey family has emitted 325 tons of carbon from their private jet. I mean, and you know, Kamala Harris over things. And you know that fact because they bought carbon offsets for them. Giving was wishing a happy Thanksgiving from her family to ours, and she's standing right in front of a gas stove. I mean, the hypocrisy yeah. is incredible. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? The gas stove thing is about trapped emissions in the house that are bad for kids that can lead to asthma, and more about, like, poorly constructed, shitty gas stoves without proper ventilation. This this myth that the the Democrats wanted to get rid of gas stoves altogether is just idiocy. But of course, if she just wants more kids with asthma, I, I don't know why she just doesn't pony up and say it. But I think the one quote that really got me was when they said uh, wine wine is a uh, too big a carbon footprint and we got to get rid of it. Harry says that we're not going to tolerate. We're going to phase out coal fired power plants all over the world. Except, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're giving China the ability to make lithium batteries, and they're developing two coal-fired power plants a week. Now, I think they're in the world, the last I checked. But the truth is... What? I, I don't understand the reasoning on this. We hear this a bunch, which is the, the idea that if they're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. That seems to be the entirety of it. And this... This ethic could be slathered across all Republican ideology. You know, if they're not going to treat women like human beings, I don't have to do it. All of this money, seven and a half billion dollars, we've got, we've built so far zero, we've installed zero, and yet they expect us to buy the... Yeah, we haven't installed zero. The end of the decade to be able to have 50% of us in these EVs when everybody's got anxiety about getting into one. Mm -hmm. N no, they don't. Hmm. No, no, they don't. Just because your news is eight fucking years old. Chargers around there. You know, Jessica, let's... Uh... Oh, boy, he's going to try and get to a joke, and then he just bailed on it. Let's talk about the real story here. It's not that Carrie broke wind. It's that more... This doesn't happen more often. Don't you think? 
I mean, we act like so, it's a surprise, but isn't this just is something we do all the time, but we just don't talk about it? So for the first time ever, if he had said, Jessica, you were saying before the show started, because <laughs> yeah. I was saying that I'm actually surprised that there aren't more farts caught on live television with the amount of... Considering si I'm sitting next to Jesse and Greg and Dana and Judge. Yes, that humans are passing constantly. Right. More boys than girls, by the way, mm -hmm. are doing it. Sexist. Um, you go, Fine. Girl. You go, girl, on that one. <laughs> and I, Jesse's not fact-checking That's an it. interesting point. If you transition from male to female, oh. would you break wind less? I don't know how the sphincter changes <laughs> in, the, uh, in the evolution. I just, actually, a producer just said the time. I thought he was saying, please stop this right now. <laughs> yeah. um, it was exciting, though, and I was curious about if you had, like, a fart clause in your contract. Like, well, you got to talk about it at a certain amount of yes. times without hearing from man. Well, the onus is on Fox. <laughs> oh, that's okay. good. What? Good. Um, that would be uh, the anus on Fox, I suppose, is where he... And it just sounded enough like, fuck me. Just a little bit. I, there should be more EV chargers. If you have the money for it, definitely do it. But on the emissions from... The Carey family, it's the Heinz family, mm -hmm. right? He married Teresa Heinz of ketchup fame. Yeah. They are the ones with the money and the private jets. He flies commercial for all government business, as everybody has before. These goals are aspirational, and that's what these conferences are for. We talk about this with Davos, right? And everyone shows up, and they say all these incredible things that they're... Sorry, I just have nothing to say when she's just being a fucking adult in, in this room full of idiots. ...gonna do to make us a more balanced, equal society, and it doesn't happen, and then everyone gets back, and they're gas guzzlers, and all of it, and rides off into the distance. Yeah, and, and you, you may raise a good point. Really? Uh, John Kerry's money comes from the Heinz family. What is Heinz? It's ketchup. What do you do with ketchup? You put it on beef. What does beef do? Causes you to fart. I don't think... No, it doesn't. <laughs> the circle of life is That's complete. Right. <laughs> good right. steak doesn't need ketchup, though. Yeah, that is true. Jesse, okay. uh, I, I come to you last because I feel like you're going to pierce through this. Oh, shit. Fog of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greg, I'm glad you brought up Heinz. Yes. Because they own Kraft, and that kills people. Mm. Coal <laughs> isn't killing that many people. Yeah, coal isn't killing that many people. Just the coal miners and anybody with breathing problems because of the coal. And anybody who's downwind from the plant in it, on it, what, depending on which way the wind blows. The I think all the food, doing it? it's the mac and cheese. It's the cheese product. Yep. His family is poisoning oh, Jesse. the people of this country. Yeah, because Fox viewers don't eat mac and cheese. With preservatives and additives and sugar, and that's what's actually the killing plastic. us. A few coal plants, come on. Also, Greg, mm -hmm. you can't trust a man with fillers mm. at that age, Botox at that age. That brings up the question of judgment. Mm -hmm. What kind of... Oh, so Eric Bowling is uh, is an idiot at this point. I guess we're just going to go... Uh, you're just going to go for the throat now? Judgment does that show. Mm -hmm. What kind of arrogance or egotism? Is that a word, egotism? You're a Trump supporter and you don't know that that's a word? Maybe that makes sense. Maybe that all finally makes sense. It is yes. now. Does Ego that show? Him. Yes. So he's going around sticking stuff in his face, wagging his finger and telling the whole world what to do. No one cares. Now I know why they don't like us in this country. Who? It's because of people like Don Kerry. It's not... Don Kerry? Don Kerry... Uh, it... Now I know why they don't like us in why? this country. It's because of people like Don Carey. It yeah, Don Carey's terrible. You ever met Don Carey? Jesus, what an asshole. <laughs> it's not Trump, it's Carey. Yeah, Don Don Carey, Donald Carey, Donald J. Carey. They're sick of him. Yeah, they're sick of Don anybody Donald J. anything, I think. It's not even the Carey part. And 15% of the U.S. economies run on coal. We're what? just going to shut down 15% of the economy? No, they're just not going to add on to those. Largely because of natural gas and nuclear and renewables. Because Kerry wants to? No, because we don't want any of our American kids downwind from coal plants anywhere. There's no fucking point. We don't want them drinking water that has to have the coal sleuth filtered out of it. 
We don't want them, kids in fucking West Virginia or Eastern Kentucky to have be born with fucking birth defects because of that shit. That's why. Mm. That's stupid. You're stupid. Why do we even listen to John Kerry? You don't. I mean, obviously, well, we... We listen to John Kerry. We don't listen to Don Kerry. That guy's an asshole. He's an idiot. He's totally, I mean, Don is. <laughs> He's a maniac. He's a maniac idiot. He's going around telling people to shut their economies down. Yeah, that's what he's telling people. Is that what he said? Well, I guess he would be a maniac if he was going around. So he's, let me get this right. He's going around telling people to shut their economies down. Is that, that's, that's what you heard when he spoke. That's insane. It is insane that you would hear that and interpret it as that. This guy is disqualified. As, as, as what? And Joe Biden, after three years, hasn't built a single charging station? No, the, the money from the previous bills, the Inflation Reduction Act, and of course the rescue package have paid for the ones so far. Yep. Not no, not yet. One? 44,000. But they say, Greg, that this is so urgent mm -hmm. that the world's going to end. We have to do this. Well, then why don't they warp speed it? Yeah. Why don't they cut all the red tape and get these charging stations like they did with the vaccine? They don't care. It's not that urgent. They're not they, capable. It's, well, right. They have been built, but just with private dollars. Yeah, right. but not our tax What about the $7 billion? $7 billion. I billion. There's a distinction between private phones and but public. Why can't Biden our, build one charger? Right. Why can't we do as well I as hope private he does it tomorrow. Where's the Because they're using the seed money for the private chargers to be built and then they get reimbursed because it's just the same thing we did with oil. Charger. Okay. I think, uh, I think this is why they want us to eat insects. Yeah, here comes the cricket. Because shit. if you fart, all you're going to hear is crickets. <laughs> okay. okay. This is done. I can't wait for your. This is dumb. Thank you, Jessica. Show tonight. Yeah, it's going to be oh. all. It's going to be 60 minutes of fart jokes. <laughs> I went on Brian. Oh. I here's the thing. Uh, I think it, I would. I would argue it would be 60 minutes of fart references. Again, I'm loath to call them jokes because they ain't. Um, and just when I thought this couldn't get any dumber, there's Brian Kilmeade. Um, can we do, we'll check in on DeSantis. I have, n by the way, considering this guy is number two, and I do mean that, um, in, in the, uh, in, in the battle for the White House on the Republican side, which is never going to happen. Um, I've heard amazingly little from this dickhead other than, I guess, the Newsom debate and then, yeah, nothing in Iowa other than the debates amongst the Republicans. Everything else is like, and maybe there's a circle of, there's a stratus of Republican right-wing commentary shows or something where they deal with them on the regular. I haven't seen it. DeSantis, 2024 presidential candidate, coming off a very strong debate with Governor Gavin Newsom last week. Governor? Yeah, strong for Gavin Newsom. I mean, but you don't have to make that distinction. Uh, some are calling this a uh, you versus Haley for the battle of the Trump alternative slot. So today in The Hill, we read that some anti-Trumpers in the Senate, Mitt Romney among them, were backing her as well. Um, it seems like someone's trying to establish an air of inevitability here regarding Haley. Your reaction? And yet yeah, an air of inevitability for second place? Well, I'm the uh, true conservative in the race. I have the, the strongest record of actually delivering results. That's including the lot of them. And yeah, I, I boot necked uh, women, gays, everybody. Just I like, you know, all the big, dumb versions of conservatism you've come to adore. I do all those things. She does the kind you have to kind of explain why they're conservative in the first place. And they may very well be more conservative than my dipshittery, but they don't look as conservative because mine's meaner and more dude -ish. I'm somebody that would be able to get in there, serve two terms and actually deliver all the. Th That's a anti-Trump shot. Things that we've wanted to see delivered. Uh huh. Oh, because Trump can't deliver. OK. At the national level, just like I did in Florida, um, I have more. Sim really? So so you're just going to drive Disney out of the entire country. Polarities on policy with Donald Trump that I do on Nikki Haley. I think Nikki Haley really represents uh, the last gas. Well, you got to understand, she's not going to go straight for the pussy grabbing stuff. It's just not in her nature, I think. Of a failed establishment. 
where she wants failed establishments to force every says the Florida governor buddy to register their identities on social media. She said, I want their names. She said we should have unlimited immigration that's controlled by corporate CEOs rather than we the people. And of course, she took this. I'm sure that's what she said. It's probably that's a direct quote side of Disney against me and this. Well, that's that's just because I think she has kids and I think she might even love them. State of Florida. When it came I mean, I'm no fan of hers, but came to protecting kids uh, from uh, sexualization of elementary school curriculum. So she in at, uh, it, at Disneyland, are, are you, have you thought about maybe protecting people going to Disneyland in the state of Florida or Disney World in the state of Florida from uh, Nazis waving Nazi flags outside the fucking place? He's out of step with the vast, vast majority of Republican voters, uh, but I think some of the- Yeah, that's why she's growing an appeal. Elements are, are people that really want to take the party back to a failed establishment of yesteryear. Oh, you mean the the times when you guys got elected to two terms in a row? That We know for sure that will not happen. I mean, when you had 12 years Bush into, or uh, Reagan into Bush, and then Bush Jr. getting both terms, and then Trump getting one term and just not learning your lesson. DeSantis, we were just talking about this devastating Washington mm. Post uh, takedown oh. of the mismanagement of the war in Ukraine. Uh, it was it, it's a blockbuster piece. Oh, yeah. So the Washington Post is now a valid source of in, information. Good. All right. Um, and th the Senate is now considering doubling and tripling down along with the House on what is has been declared by pretty much both sides a stalemate. What is your view on this, given... Well, if it was a stalemate and one side should win over the other, then you would double down on what you're doing so that you would increase the likelihood that the side that you support would actually win. And if it's a stalemate and one side gets more support from you, they might actually... See how that works, shithead? The problems that have already been caused and encountered. Caused and encountered? Well, I guess if they're problems, they have to be caused. No, some are organic, I suppose. Well, we're functionally bankrupt as a country. We have massive problems here at home. You know, they've sent billions and billions of dollars to do things like pay salaries for Ukrainian bureaucrats, pay for pensions uh, for, for Ukrainian bureaucrats, fund small businesses, doing things that, that... Yeah, those small businesses, by the way, and the management of the actual... For the function of the actual government. First of all, it's a loan. Secondly, the, it, the, the small businesses they're talking about are largely so grain can get to Africa so millions of people don't die. American taxpayers should, should not have to do. Um, and so I think that... We don't have to. We choose to. Uh, Republicans need to tend to the issues that we're dealing with um, here. Reading. Here in the United States. Book burning. Uh, I do agree that... Uh, there is uh, there is a stalemate. Uh, I think if you keep funding massive amounts of money two, three years down the line, I don't think there's going to have been much of a difference in terms. Well, that's because you're stupid. But also it, this will be over that by then of, of how this ends. So Biden should try to bring this to a conclusion. It's not our war. We're just helping. Uh, as president, I will definitely bring it to a conclusion. You're just going to hand Russia the eastern part of Ukraine and call it a day. Now, squad member um, Pramila Jayapal is getting Pramila Jayapal a lot of heat, Governor, for what she said about rapes being committed and documented by Hamas. Watch. I already answered your question, Dana. I, I said it's horrific, and okay. I think that rape is horrific, sexual assault is horrific. I think that it happens in war situations. However, I think we have to be balanced about bringing in the outrages against Palestinians. Governor, your reaction. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, they what they did, Hamas did to to the Israelis, these are civilians, many of them women and children, uh, was barbaric. It was a new low of depravity. I mean, even but if they were Ukrainians in Bucha, they had it coming, right? And ISIS didn't reach this low uh, on some of the things that Hamas was. The, the Russians have done it in Somalia. They've done it in Sudan and Darfur. They've done it in Chad and the Congo. And they've done it in Ukraine. And yet, I suppose we got to we got to talk to them. You know what I mean? Because you got to talk. Doing when Israel is responding to defend itself, they are conducting themselves uh, with standards. They are conducting themselves in accordance with the law of war. As is Ukraine. Interesting. It's. 
curious to me. You hear a lot of talk about civilians in Gaza, but just understand that is Hamas's fault. Uh, all, all these civilians can be protected if Hamas unconditionally surrenders and releases all the hostages. Uh, they refuse to do it. Israel cannot sit there with a terrorist group on its border that wants a second Holocaust. They have every right to defend themselves, and they should defend themselves. Finally, Governor, um, I know you have some thoughts about Florida State being left out of the college football playoffs. A lot of heartache in Florida. You know, I'm a Bama fan. I was at the Georgia game. Um, yeah, let's let's jump straight from sexual assault in in the October seventh attack on on Jews and foreign nationals and people at a music festival and children. Um, let's jump straight from that to Florida should have gotten in the game, don't you think? So I might we might have a little disagreement here, but what's your reaction? Trump apparently is blaming you for this situation somehow. Well, uh, yeah, so. Uh, they undefeated conference champion and to be left out in favor of two one loss teams and, and not those are good teams. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, but Florida great State team. earned that spot. Now, people have said, um, you know, what's going to is there anything you can do? They're actually looking to see is there anything they can do? I don't know if there is any recourse, but I have set aside there is side a million dollars in case there ever is any litigation. I'm not saying that there's going to. He said a million dollars aside for potential litigation to fight for their football team being included in the conference. They are looking at it. Uh, I don't think that this uh, has spoke well for college football. Who gives a shit? And we'll see. And yeah. They'll be in, and, and at one point Florida will be in, and they, don't, they won't deserve it compared to somebody else anyways. It's college. You know, Donald Trump wants to blame me. You know, he also said that um, he also took Disney side against us when we stood. Also, doesn't Trump live in Florida? Maybe that's why they lost. For the kids. He also said Cuomo in New York did COVID uh, be better than we did, and they attacked me for being pro-life. Maybe that's a reason we should have a debate on your show, Laura. Stop being a keyboard warrior, and let's uh, step up and debate one-on-one. -on -one. He's had a lot to yeah. say about me over the last year. Say it to yeah. my face. I'm game. Yeah, well, you know, the... I'm game. <laughs> Awkward smile. The RNC has their supposed rules. They can't... Supposed rules. Have debate. It's, uh, that all has to go away. You need to go... Yeah, then they, they, they he's to go away. You should just walk up to him in Iowa and start debating. Just start yelling in his face. And he'll yell back, and then someone will bring out podiums. It'll be magic. ...ahead with Nikki Haley. It will be totally fair. Everyone will get a fair shot and a fair chance to Totally. Speak. Total, a fair shot to I, for Donald Trump to jerk them off all over his tie and his And I know Governor um, uh, Haley would, you know, quit herself well, and I know you would have quit... Your she would quit herself well herself very well. So I hope she takes our uh, our offer on that. And it's an open invitation. Governor, thank you so much. Hey, Sean. Yeah, yeah they're going to be just good. It, that's only going to happen. Fuck, man. I'm so bored with him already. I'm Now I understand why there's, there's simply just they're not using him at all because he's not going to drive any possible viewership at all, ever. Good Lord. Uh, Florida State QB is out now due to a broken leg. I... Ah, you know, the mass murder. Thanks to Republic. Oh, yes. UNLV. We yeah, there was a shooting at UNLV um, uh, today. Um, you know, we were like summer called me and we were all checking in on people. You know, we're still waiting to see if um, Ethan, you know, has any friends that were there or that were in harm's way, you know, finding that stuff out. So, you know, fingers crossed. Why is this all cockeyed? You weird thing. Hold on. Take that out, and then what is this, this widget being weird? Get the joint back up. Oh, there it is. Okay, now it's working. Maybe? Yeah. Um, all right, I, uh, I'm going to call it a day, guys. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I can't believe it actually worked. I hope it was fairly fluid. I felt like, I always feel like when I'm doing the show here, I'm trying to make it work at the same time I'm doing the show, which is a little distracting, so I just don't feel like the show is like up to par because I'm always like, is it on? Am I on? Am I on? In the back of my head, I have like this just one gear turning constantly, um, tr trying to make sure I'm still uh, present. But um, uh, it, real quick before I go, um, let's see if I can find in here. Um, I, you know, when I showed earlier, I showed um, uh, Phil. Um, 
this video of the Hamas leader being taken to the hospital and the difference between the hospital um, and apparently um, since that time, hold on, let's see if we get this. Um, it's this dude, yeah. So let me show you real quick. Um, I will pause this, turn this off. Ooh, yeah, and then, um, yeah, this guy right here. So I was showing you guys this earlier, and I, and I know everybody is going to get a chance to see it, but I want you to contrast every other picture you've seen of somebody taking a Palestinian into a hospital for care, every other scene that you have seen. Somebody carried by hand or brought in in a van or something like that, taken in for care, right? It all looks like they're being carried into a, a burnout building or nobody's there to take care of them or they're being serviced on the floor and nobody has any, uh, any like the, the lights are out. There's no uh, cleaning like, or uh, like um, there's no Purell or alcohol or bandages or any of the stuff. They're treating people on the floor, right? That's, the, that's what you keep hearing. Meanwhile, when they bring in the Hamas leader, He's in this place. Uh, they bring him in in this uh, uh, ambulance with the lights on. Totally fine. And these guys are beating people back with sticks to clear the space because everybody's crowding around because they know he's in there. Um, they're hit like it's weird that they whack everybody in the shins, but they bring this dude around. He's the second in command. He's one of the guys who was the architect of uh, October seventh. He's dead now but they brought him into the hospital. And I just want to be abundantly clear in this. Look at the other cars, the lights, the ceiling, the construction. There's a very distinct difference between the hospital that he gets to go to and the hospital that Palestinians get to go into. And the other part is, is that fuck is that a sausage fest? Look at that. Now, I find it hard to believe that in the same strike, there may or may not have been women or children. Anyone in that area? Yeah. What are, What are the odds? He was just by himself or with... He just managed to be the only person they pulled out of the rubble? Or again, most densely populated place in the world. 50% children. All the stuff you've heard. Look at that crowd. The other thing is, I don't know what the fuck they're beating these dudes up about. And nice electric bike, by the way. This is in Gaza. This is, again, their own footage. So, um, yeah. Um, that I, I find uh, parts of that aggravating. Now, the other thing is, is that uh, this may be, um, in theory, no, is it Sinwar? Hold on. Um, let's see if we have this. Netanyahu raised for have surrounded the home of Hamas leader uh, uh, Yahya Sinwar in Gaza. Um, yeah, that's this guy. So this is the by the way, this is the guy who um, is the architect of the October seventh plan. He's the guy who um, planned the whole thing, helped them carry it out. Like, this was the strategy. Now, does anybody know, it's a it's sort of a trick question, does anybody know what uh, magic word he used to start prepping this? He sent a note to Netanyahu through channels, specifically, do you remember what word he used, what he asked for, and what he got, and during which time, while he got what he asked for, he planned this October 7th. Does anybody remember what it was called? What, he, what the magic word was? Chat room, anybody? Any rags, any bones, any rags today? Anybody? Perhaps? Um, and I, I wish I could read that text. It's too small on my screen. It's very disappointing. Hold on. Maybe if I stretch it out, who can say? Um, there you Yeah. Um... Truce, pretty close. Outrageous, almost. Tro we got a troll, that's fine. It was not Shalom, that's definitely true. Booger, that's a, that'll get you kicked off the air in, uh, uh, even in a rock station in the 70s. 
Uh, Allah Akbar. Uh, no. Ceasefire. Uh, Phil got it right. Ceasefire. Yeah. He, uh, in when Trump gave the Golan Heights to Israel, recognized them as part of Israel, and um, said the capital was Jerusalem, moved the embassy, that was when this guy, uh, Yahya Sinwar, Yahya, Yahya, Yahya Sinwar, um, sent a note via channels to Benjamin Netanyahu and said, I want a conditional ceasefire and we can find some way to live in peace and da, da, da. And, they, and the Israelis accepted it and they immediately started a process giving um, Palestinians day passes and then work passes into Israel. It went on for a couple of years. It turns out that a lot of those people were mapping the outsides of the walls and the security cameras and all that kind of stuff that were ultimately hit on the 7th and also uh, paths out of um, and through the walls and the fencing around the area. Yep. And uh, this all started with a ceasefire. So for all the people calling for a ceasefire, I would like to remind you that October 7th started because of a ceasefire. This guy asked for one and got one and then used it specifically as a ruse. And then after October 7th, bragged about it and said, we're going to keep doing it forever and ever. And there'll be another October 7th, as many as we can have until all the Jews are destroyed and Israel is pushed into the sea. Right now, um, according to reports, and this is all, you know, we'll see where it goes, but uh, Israeli defense forces have supposedly, have supposedly surrounded the house of Yahya Sinwar uh, in Khan Yunus. Now, you've been hearing about Khan Yunus as one of the towns where um, civilians are being told to go. Interesting that that's where this motherfucker actually would be. Now, I got news for you. He has other homes. He has other places. And as a matter of fact, there's this uh, theory that he has a relationship, kind of a, a, a truce with Egypt, uh, basically, that gives him a bug out lane if he ever wants to leave the tunnel. You know, he can leave through a tunnel that goes into Egypt. Okay? Um, day passes sounds like a, an apartheid. It's not. Because it's basically like, because um, it's two countries, effectively, and saying you could, you know, people can work and, and visit their relatives in Israel and the like, but they don't want to live in Israel. They want to, you know, they, they have homes in, in, the, in Gaza and in the West Bank. Anyways, yeah, exactly, Mark. It's just one of his safe houses, but it is the one he is alleged to be in and more than likely has a tunnel underneath it or an entry to the tunnels underneath it. The difference is, and this is why they think they might have him, uh, him surrounded. They've got his house surrounded, but why they think he's in it is because they have been, f um, let's see if I can find this real quick, uh, without, I don't want to bring up something on screen that will, uh, be gross. Um, let's see, uh, I have the, Yeah, so the, um, the Hamas called uh, October 7th the Al-Aqsa Flood. And um, in the, during, whoops, hold on, let me show you this. They called it the Al-Aqsa Flood. And they said, we're going to, today is the day of the Al-Aqsa Flood and it will continue and there will be another one on the 9th and the 10th and the 10,000th day of October and whatever, like that shit. But he was talking about an ongoing uh, thing. They're, they're calling it specifically the Flood. Which is particularly curious, considering this little piece of information. Uh, the IDF, I turn the sound off. The IDF has decided the best way to handle these tunnels is to fill them with seawater, because going down in there with the bombs and with the you know the weapons caches and the terrorists themselves and stuff is very dangerous. So. Uh, and the civilians aren't allowed down in there. There's some concern that hostages might be in there, but they think pretty, you know, in the areas that they're doing this, that they aren't available. But this is, this is the seawater um, entering into the tunnels. And the, I, I guess, one of these guys effectively perishing and them finding his footage later. This is a, a loop of that stuff. They are now, and they're warning everybody. They said, we're, we're going to, we're flooding these tunnels get out. They even tell, this isn't even like civilians aren't even in these things. 
um, these, this is all Hamas. Regular civilians are not allowed in these tunnels. They are for Hamas. And the Israelis are even warning Hamas to get out of the tunnels. These are the pumping stations they brought in. They're br- pumping in seawater. Um, Deputy Commander of the North Gaza Brigade, Wail Rajab, inspecting terror runners. He was, he was dead. Um, with Ahmad Gandor, uh, commander of the brigade's terrorism support battalion, uh, flushed the IDF pumps seawater into the uh, tunnels. This is when this guy was down there. Apparently, is the theory. When they so they got him. And this is this is that piece of yeah, that footage. So that's making the rounds. Um, and so a lot of these folks are like you know, the folks saying ceasefire now, ceasefire now, ceasefire now. Um, first of all, this isn't fire, this is water. Secondly, um, the October 7th started with a ceasefire. The, 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 the Israelis agreed to a ceasefire with Hamas and Hamas specifically used that as time to build and train for and design the October 7th attacks and then act on them and say they're going to keep doing them again and tell everybody that that's, uh, it, that, that they had rope doped Israel. Yeah, the IDF wanted to flood, want to flood the alleged uh, Hamas down network with seawater. This would further worsen the area already degraded groundwater sources. Civilians have been requires possible 1.3 million seawater a day. What? We packed for peace spoke with Wall Street Journal. Okay. Um, why would that affect the seawater if the existence of the tunnels doesn't do it? Anyways, that's the reason. That's a, that's and these are the these are you know the discovery of these holes and the this stuff is just like ubiquitous everywhere. More and more of this, and then um, one more thing that I'll send you off with because you know since I'm in a mood to show awful. Um, let's see if I can find this without. Um, Mm-hmm. Where is it? Yeah, so um, there's a foot a piece of footage that's been um, circulating on <laughs> um, there's a That's, I don't want it to, okay, so yeah, here it is. This is, and it's, let me make sure it's blurred out. Yeah, it is, okay. So this is uh, footage of an Israeli woman who was taken um, on um, on October 7th. There she is. That's them tearing her shirt off. And then at one point, this one guy picks her up and carries her on his back. She refuses to walk. He's carrying her backwards like this. She, and, and she's not really kicking. She's just like, at one point, she tries to. She doesn't want to go, and the guy falls over. And um, you'll see this uh, fella. There he is with the gun, punches her in the head. They then throw a. She's. Uh, they tear her clothes off, and then they cover her in this sheet. They wrap her in this so she can't move much. It keeps falling off. Um, that's. That that was a point of pride for those folks on that day. That was a. Uh, that that that's where they yelled Allahu Akbar. They, they yelled that a bunch of times. Now I don't know how the Allahu Akbar thing ties to that behavior. Imagine, if you will. Um, imagine if you will, if U.S. soldiers did something similar to that, yelling "Praise Jesus." I mean, think about that for a second. Just, just, yeah, just wrap your head around on the regular praise Jesus. Yeah. How bizarre that would be for a thing to do. Now, you can imagine, I think, a highly religious American soldier or something uh, being freed from a POW camp or getting out, maybe saying that to himself or out loud. 
or to herself out loud. But not when they just like are bashing someone's head in. So, um, the, the other thing too is, and I don't know, I can't even show this footage or whatever, but in the West Bank, um, two, uh, two men were lynched, um, for, uh, being, for the accusation that they were collaborating with the Israelis. Um, both of them were black. And I have noticed a complete lack of interest or outrage around those things were it anywhere else, especially on my side of the aisle. I can't, again, I can't speak to the right wingers. I don't think they give a shit, period. They just figure, you know, again, it's a fight between a, a, a panther and an alligator. I don't, you know, whoever wins is going to be wounded and they're not going to come after me is the idea. But I think on our side, we at least... You're, I guess some people are at least, they should be forced to pretend to care, maybe? Yeah. Has it been reported? Yes, it has. Quite a bit. Um, uh, the, let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, you don't, um, okay, at least I think it's blurred out in this, oh, yeah, well, they, I think you can only see the guy's uh, feet in this situation. Um, and I'm only going to show you a quick scene of it. That's that's the guy's feet right there. See all those phones? That's, that's as much as I can show you. Uh, they were uh, effectively crucified upside down. Um, and uh, they, yeah, they were... Hung, hung upside down. They were, they were lynched. One, one man was hung, and then the other was hung upside down. But everybody filmed it. It's all over Arabic channels in the area. Um, and again, that's, that's a distinction. These are all. These people are all filming this stuff on, on Google, on Android phones, Huawei phones, iPhones. Do you, do you know what a depraved human being you have to be to have a cell phone with service and still want to watch a lynching of someone? Yeah. Yes, that's 2023. That's now. So yeah, all fully charged, hanging around, get making sure they get it, man. It's like a it's a Taylor Swift sighting. Seriously, look at the number of phones. Look at them. Like I said, I can't show you um, most of that because it is horrific. It gets worse after that. I can only show you that little snippet. Um, yeah, not a third world country, not a developing country. If you've got cell phones and, uh, you know, again, it's like uh, Pal the Palestinian territories had representatives at the COP 28, uh, 20, what is it, 25, 28, 28 summit um, while this is happening. Yeah, it's gross. Here's and here's my only rule. Like I again, um, this is a very again a highly complex issue. The solution will be complex. There is plenty of blood on both sides, but there's a very distinct difference between the sides as far as their political nature. One, uh, you know, if one side put their guns down, if the if if Israelis put their guns down, there would be no Israel. If Hamas put their guns down, there would be two states. That's just the reality. Same thing with Ukraine. If Russia put their guns down, the war would be over. If Ukraine puts the war, uh, it puts their guns down, then Ukraine would be over. And so I'm on the side of the group 
that would, if they sought peace, if they were honest brokers of peace and put their weapons down, would be killed, that means they're the good guys. It means the other side would use that as an opportunity to kill. That's the standard. I think it's a fairly decent standard. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be on the side of the bully in that situation. That's the difference. And it's an ideological difference. It's not just a capability. It's an ideological one. Um, and, you know, and in this particular instance, it's just horrifying. But at the same time, I want to remind everybody that the same people that are doing ceasefire now and saying all this shit, A... If they have not watched the uh, the footage that Hamas puts out of what they did on October 7th, not what the Israelis said they did, not the press reports on it, the video Hamas released themselves. If you can watch that and still think this is an even Steven, you know, like both sides have an equal point of existence and both sides want the same goal once things are over, just a state solution and that's that, um, then I, I don't know how you could, but at least you will have watched all of it. Um, Because you'd have to be some sort of a psychopath to get, you know, that message from that footage. You just, I don't know how you can. Um, And and on top of that, you also, if you don't care equally, if you don't, if you think Russia's allowed to do this to Ukraine, but Israel isn't allowed to do this to Gaza, if that's your equation that you're making in your head, then the only difference between... Uh, the, the only consistency in this situation is that the Russians are attacking a country with a Jewish president and the, uh, Hamas is attacking a country with a Jewish president. Therefore, that seems to be the one unity line where you think these two groups deserve it. The other thing is, is if you don't give a fuck about Sudan in this process, I don't want to hear it. If you can, if you're... If you're dig, dug in on this one because somehow in your head you made it a brown versus white fight and you don't give a shit about like the the, the RSF and the Sudanese army and the Dar, and people in Darfur and the and the secondary the minority tribes in those countries because you can't tell them apart then I don't know why I would give a I would think you would be a an honest broker in any of this situation or that I should trust your ability to judge what's going on in any of these circumstances, the humanity of anyone. Because right now, all I see is that there's a bunch of Aleppo's. Yeah, Aleppo's another good example. Although what I would say is, is that you've got a very distinct group of people in Aleppo that I think people seize on where, uh, again, you can buy a stamp with Hitler on it um, in Syria and, and, Bashar Bashar al-Assad comes from the side that supports that. The people who have, you know, named their dogs Stalin and Hitler. But I, you know, again, I don't trust anybody's judgment if A, they can only watch one side of the atrocities and draw their conclusions. If you've seen both sides of what the atrocities look like and what both sides are, how they're discussing what they're doing, how they're carrying it out with precision or imprecision, what are they doing precisely and what are they doing imprecisely? Is there a distinction made? Is there any, you know, is one side saying we're being careful not to kill civilians and we're, you know, we're really just focusing on military targets and the other side is saying there's no such thing as civilians? Yeah. Right, Danny. That's, that's, and that's exactly what happened here. So, um... That, but uh, honest to God, like look at the 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 Darfur region and Sudan, and look at the people that are clamoring about free Palestine and from the river to the sea, and the whole, they're just kind of marching around because it's got a nice sound to it. But gave up on Darfur in 2013, and that's old news, like a fucking shirt they used to wear. When it's again, uh, by death toll worse than what's happening here. And it's ongoing. There's not even attention being paid to what one side or the other is doing. The UN just pulled out of Sudan. The UN um, had a a 
committee they put together for the stabilization of and the, you know, trying to do some reconciliation between the two sides in Sudan, they just left. They voted yesterday. They're leaving. If they, I mean, they'd already bugged out most of the people anyways. They just shut the whole thing down. It isn't safe for anybody to be there anyways. They're not going to accomplish anything. But they know that. And they, and they, by the way, this is the same UN organization that is voting on a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. L- look at their record of managing the crisis in Sudan. And why would you, how, I mean, honestly, if you were, you were in charge of either of these situations and you're like, we're going to send in these brokers to help you even the, you know, even this out politically, even the score politically so that you can start building a dialogue. And then you go, you mean like you did in Sudan? which popped off in April and has just gotten worse. That's what matters. Other than that, I have no opinion. You guys are lovely. Um, Take care. I'm sorry to drop such a, a bummer at the end of this, but these are very serious issues. And again, if you hear anybody spouting shit like, the hashtag free Palestine, like it can be something that flippant in this real situation. And they haven't watched the video Hamas put out themselves on October 7th and, and the continuing videos they're putting up on Arab telegram channels and the like, then just go find somebody else to talk to about it. Cause you'll find somebody who wants a two state solution. Like I do, like a good portion of our chat room does, if not all some version of it. Right. Uh, an honest brokerage of that thing, I think that's pretty reasonable. But if you're talking to somebody who, uh, you know, is just using, is speaking about it as flippantly like it's a hashtag, um, it you might as well be one of these Hamas fighters who's yelling, uh, yelling Alu Akbar when they're doing something with about all the religious conviction of get her done. Hydrosonic, I call it super duper. They don't like the gas for IO values. But to me, Corona means Italy.
They do action replays in magnified portion. Military institutions and their installations. Once it was reluctantly aroused, it was hard to get it aroused, and it is hard to get it aroused, but we got it aroused. We're honored to have with us today our amazing Vice President Mike Pence and his wonderful wife, Karen. <laughs> Your Semites, your Semites. If you get it in order, you get extra points. That's better than a brick because you can't throw a brick, it's too heavy. I never thought anybody could forget so much so fast without a severe blow to the head. Computer board. Legal in I don't read, obviously. You're gonna frack. Piece of malware called Q Snack. What? Bob A. Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh. This is 100% accurate.